It's the Orioles on Masson and a chance to win a series and a chance to do it against the Oakland A's as the Orioles and A's wrap up not only this series but also the homestand, which is guaranteed to be a successful one for the O's. Last night, the bats were booming and the home runs were flying out. Five of them for the O's. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne. In a ball game like that, sometimes there are little things that happen that get lost in the mix of all that offense. There were important plays that mattered last night. Fifth inning off Suzuki's bat. A great catch made by Marquez. It stopped the leadoff man from getting on. Albers came in, needed a ground ball double play. That is exactly what they got to get out of the inning. And again, it would be Marquez in the ninth. That great basket catch set up a save and an Orioles win and a rally that wouldn't be for the A's. Small things that came in a big game that mattered for the Orioles. Yeah, and because uh, early in the game they weren't doing the right things. 3 nothing lead, it evaporates, they didn't uh, play very good defense uh, behind Kevin Millwood. He gives up a three-run home run, but then they come back and, uh, you know what, the last five wins, all when they've gone back, and as far as I'm concerned, a lot of it has to do more offense, but in the, the, the bullpen has just been masterful. Last six games, only two runs to a very low ERA, giving the team a chance to come back and win some games. And tough that Luke Scott, a home run last night, while running it out, ends up pulling his hamstring on the DL. So a major league debut as a result of that. Josh Bell is here and will start at third base. And, uh, of course, you know, switch hitter, we saw him, uh, you know, I think they've, he's made, what, uh, 13 errors, but they, I'm talking to Gary Allison, who was his manager before he came to third base, because he's had a lot of them early on. So, you know, a great opportunity. He's going to get to see Major League pitching when it counts. And, again, I mean, this is a kid that's got a lot of power. Orioles need power. Let's see how he handles third base. The plan is Bell will be here probably for five or six games, and then Felix P.A. will take his place when the Orioles are on the road and in Detroit. And, important. Importantly tonight, Jake Arietta, yet another of the young names, Jim, looking to rebound. Two good starts early, the last two not so good. Well, you know, he's a pretty introspective guy. You know, I mean, from a pitching standpoint, he's got great stuff. He struggled with his command. Uh, you know, it kind of evaporated down in San Diego after those first two starts, and then he was roughed off by the Nationals. But, you know, I talked to him today, and he said, listen, I, I know that I maybe try to overdo things, so hopefully he'll be able to relax tonight. Uh, you know, Oakland seems to be, always stay in ball games. He's Facing Trevor Hill, K, who was you know seven and two with a very low ERA, so it's going to be a good challenge tonight. But the great thing about pitching the third game, especially the rubber game, Gary, is you get to see somebody, uh, you get to see that other team hit for a couple of nights, so you can make adjustments. All right, then we'll have a chance to go through the month of June as it went for the Orioles, and also some of the big names in the month of June around Major League Baseball as the Orioles, amazingly, and the rest of baseball and all the rest of us head into the summer months of July. And during our broadcast, we'll be covering the bases, the Orioles in the community. We'll look at some of the players and what they are doing for others.
Southwest Airlines. Go to southwest.com, grab your bag, it's on. And buy Mercedes-Benz. Experience truly great engineering today at your authorized dealer. Well, this weather for this particular series has been nothing short of the best you could ever hope for, and it is another gorgeous night here at Camden Yards. Let's take a look at our train game time temperature. It is 77 degrees, mostly clear skies, and a very comfortable night. Visit trainsearch.com to locate an independent train dealer near you. It's hard to stop a train. Now let's take a look at the starting lineup we'll see in this final game against the Oakland A's, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Davis, Barton, and Kuzminoff. Suzuki, Sweeney, and Cust. Ellis, Gross, and Pennington. In June, 336 for the third baseman with five home runs, 14 RBIs. Tremendous offensive month. And take a look at our scouting report. 24-year-old uh, right-hander, well, control the leadoff spot. Uh, Five for nine, uh, and it started down in San Diego when Tony Gwynn Jr. hurt him, and then last uh, last start against the Nats, it was Niger Morgan. Too many base runners, just too many walks, too many hits. And again, uh, as all young pitchers, just trying to find how your stuff translated to the big league level. And he was amazingly good down at AAA Norfolk at 6-2, and two, low ERA. So execute your pitches. He's got good stuff. And he just has to command them a little bit better and also command that windup. He has a tendency to get under pitches. So, again, the high ERA, but that's in the last two games. So, Jake Arrieta will be looking to get on that win track and pick up the win. Our scouting report brought to you by PNC for the achiever in us all. And we are about ready to go. And uh, we'll keep a close eye at uh, third base tonight. As you can bet, with a 23-year-old, there's... Uh, there are some uh, flutter bugs going in the stomach. He gets a hello from the third base umpire down there. Josh Bell is making the start. And uh, Marty Foster just gave him a tip of the cap, said welcome. Mike Gago, the third base coach for the A's, did the same thing. Now they'll forget all about that and go at one another. Raja Davis leads it off, and he will take that for a strike. Davis back in the leadoff spot with Coco Crisp getting the uh, ball game off. Certainly Crisp has been the hot hitter, and Davis has not been. As uh, Raja Davis coming into this one, with, uh, having only one hit in his last 22 at bats. 1 1 delivery, and that will be fouled away. And a one ball, two strike count on him. Yeah, and for Josh Bell, of course, that he'll move back now, but he was up about three steps in front of the bag because of the speed of Davis. I mean, he gets on. Going to be a track meet, 26 steals, only been caught five times, and now you can play back a little bit. Not too far, though, because you don't want to give up a hit in front of you. One ball, two strike count. Arietta gets it into him. You got to hustle this throw over as Torres up knows it, makes the running toss, and gets him good play. One down. Nick Marcakis last night, spectacular catches in the outfield. None better than the one he caught right here, basket catch late in the ball game in the ninth inning. Great play. Well, you saw two illustrations of why he should get a gold glove at some point. Patterson, Jones, and then Nick out in right field. Josh Bell in his major league debut uh, down at third base. There's Torres and Moore and back at uh, second base. Wigington finally got off this night. First home run as a first baseman. And then uh, Weeders not doing the catching again tonight. And Barton will stand in. And he will take the pitch down low for a ball. Barton has played in all these games. He's had three hits and eight at bats. Now 282 on the year. For Derek Barton, four home runs, 30 RBIs, 52 strikeouts, and 48 walks. A lot of stuff going on for him, even when the ball isn't put in play. One ball, one strike count. 24-year-old looking for his third win. That one down the line in left. Patterson going over and uh, will make the catch in foul territory. Played that one well, two down. Well, the one thing Corey could do is uh, he could cover some ground, uh, whether he's stealing bases 12 out of 14, but he could get get into the gaps. We saw him make a, over the weekend against the Nats a great play. So just very, very routine in a sense when you have that kind of speed, but it's an out, and that's what you're looking for. If you're Jake Arrieta, you want to get 18 to 21 outs tonight. You want to give your team a chance to win and get deep in this game. Now he's got a chance to have a good uh, first inning. See if he can finish it off now. Kosmanoff at the plate. 0 for his last 17, including an 0 for 9 in this series. Takes that one to center field, into the shadows, and then back into the sunlight. Jones hauls it in, and Arietta retires the A's in order. Orioles line up when we come back.
bottom half of the inning. Starting lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. It'll be Patterson, Tejada, Marquegas, Wigginton, Jones, and Weeters. Bell, Moore, and Astorish. Major League debut at third base. And our scouting report on uh, Trevor Cahill, your PNC uh, bank scouting report. Real deal. I mean, he's got four-plus pitches. He's won his last six decisions. He's tough in the first. He's yet to give up a run. And then uh, when you start, uh, how do you do when you get men in base? On base, 204. So very, very low numbers. And he's been on a roll. Last year, the lefties really hurt him. This year, he's handling pretty well. So Trevor Cahill will go to work. And the pitch will be taken up high for a ball. For Cahill, those are big numbers. 288, 213 opponent batting average. He does not qualify. He's four innings shy of qualifying for being considered among the leaders. So he doesn't show up. Uh, if he did, he would be in the top 10, top 5, in fact, an opponent batting average and an ERA. Pitch will be taken away. Corey Patterson, a five game hit streak. Corey has upped his average to 286. And he's had a four for seven so far in this series. And Cahill will get that pitch in there for a strike three and one. You would imagine he's going to get a pretty good pitch to hit because you don't want to walk him. Again, the ability to steal bases gets you good pitches to hit. That one to left field. And misjudged. It'll take a hop off the wall as Gross misplayed it. And it will be a double to lead the ball game off for Corey Patterson on what should have been an easy out. Yeah, the ball, I mean, the wind gusting. It's blowing in, and the wind swirls here. I mean, once you take that one look, and again, the ball right at you, probably the hardest to read. And he just doesn't get a good read on it. I don't know if he would have caught it anyway, because the ball really jetted. I mean, even the ball, the, the last out that Kuzminov hit to center field went a long way, and it didn't seem like he had a great swing. So maybe one of those nights again where the ball is really traveling. This is interesting, because this outfield tonight is because Cahill is a ground ball pitcher. Garen uses this outfield of Gross, Davis, and Sweeney to get offense, but it is a bad defensive outfield except for Davis and center, really. The other two are there for more for their bats than for their D, and lo and behold, on the first batter, uh, play in left field not made. Cahill is a pronounced ground ball pitcher. In fact, a two-to-one ratio in ground ball to fly ball, so when he's on, you're going to see a lot of action in the infield. And they got to yeah, out. Yeah. He'd love to ground one to the right side. War through. Tejada in the DH role for this ball game with Bell playing at third base. Here's the 0 1 delivery and a slow roller. Patterson goes late, but he's got plenty of time to get there. Cahill will make the play. Tejada retired, one away. We'll take a look at the Oakland defense. You've already seen Gabe Gross. Uh, he was in right field the other night. Uh, Davis in center, Sweeney in right. Kuzman off at third. Pennington, Ellis, Barton. And then a guy that seems almost like he's the captain of this team, Kurt Suzuki, behind the plate. Miguel Tejada, by the way, only the second game where he's DH'd this season. So the RBI chance early on will go to Marquegas. And can the Orioles be the first to get a run in the first inning against a Cahill, who has not allowed that to happen and has gotten off to very good starts? Nick Marquegas has a one for six. In this series, Nick with three homers and 24 RBIs drives that one to right center field. Raja Davis is way back, and that will get a run in. Patterson will tag and score. Marquegas, the RBI, is 25th, and the Orioles have a 1 0 lead. Yeah, I think he broke his bat. I think they tried to go in. They might have gotten in there. It gives you an idea. Strong hitter, ball, and the wind blowing out, traveling tonight. Foot down. That's what he's trying to do. So there's your first run of the year in the first inning against Trevor Cahill. And situational hitting. Getting him over to third base, making it a little bit easier for Marquez. So now the base is clear with two down. And uh, here is Ty Wigginton. It's had only one hit in the series, but it was the home run that he picked up. A two RBI homer in the seventh inning last night that would tie the ball game up. And then Luke Scott followed him against another pitcher so that they ended up with back-to-back -back homers in the ball game. And uh, Luke Scott had the game winning. Wigginton had the game tying RBI. And he will foul that one away. Ty saying before the game that back is still bothering him a bit, but he's out there playing every day. And this season, you see, he's the only player in the majors with home runs at three different positions. 11 at second, two when he's played third, and one now as a first baseman. 
fooled on the pitch, hits it down to third. Kuzminov thought gets it over, and that will retire the side. But the Orioles get a run. Patterson led it off for the double, brought home on the Marquecas sack, fly for the one nothing lead. Fifteen, Gonzalez, Nick Markakis with 11, tied with Corey Hart, David Wright, and Michael Young. As we are into July, as incredible as that seems. We'll note some of the numbers in June for the Orioles as we go along here tonight. Suzuki, Sweeney, and Cust coming up. Kurt Suzuki, a couple of hits in the eight at-bats in this series. So Jake Arrieta is staked to the early... 1 0 lead in the ballgame. Suzuki, 10 homers, 35 RBIs. Suzuki, one of those in the American League who certainly hates to see the month of June roll on by. It was a home run month for him. He ended up hitting 292 in June and had six home runs, one ahead of Kuzminoff for the Oakland A's home runs in June. Nothing like being healthy, especially if you're a catcher. And if you hurt your ribs, which is what he hurt early in the year, missed 19 games. Boy, they are glad to get him back. Bob Guerin's team, 10 games behind again as they lost the game last night. As Torres nice backhand. Long throw is on the money. Suzuki has retired one away. Visit Orioles.com for your chance to want a piece of Orioles history. The throwback jerseys and hats worn Saturday by the O's and Nationals are up for auction at Orioles.com. The benefits, the Orioles Charitable Foundation. And you can bid on the Orioles game-worn helmets and jerseys worn in the pregame ceremonies by the members of the 70 World Champs. Each item autographed and authenticated. Bidding closes Monday. Orioles.com. Get on there and take a look. Strike taken on the inside corner. Sweeney has always had really good numbers against the Orioles. Really hasn't had much of a chance in this series. That one's going to go into left field for a base hit. He only had three at bats coming in. That's going to be a second hit. So he's two for four in the series. And there's the first hit for the A's. Well, that's what he did last night. Uh, didn't hit it well. Corey Patterson misplayed it. It got by him. And it was part of the six run fourth inning that uh, they got off Kevin Millwood. And the coup de gras, of course, was the. Home run. I mean, the slider to Coco Crisp. He hit it into the right center field feet, seats. I wonder if he's not playing because of the hitting his head off the wall. Yeah, you got to think that has something yep. to do with it. Yep. Well, he really made a great catch. A strange night. The pitch is taken outside for a ball. Cuts the designated hitter. He too has had only one at bat in the series, going 0 for 1. Said he had a very good June, hitting 303 with a couple of home runs, 20 hits, 66 at bats in June for Cust. DH tonight, hitting at 286 on the season. Arietta's delivery to him, and that will miss inside. By the way, last night, and there's still a discussion going on today about the David Ellis 
when he came in to score on what was originally called a steal of home, then changed to a fielder's choice, and then apparently after the game last night was changed again to a defensive indifference. That one in the air to right field. It is deep. Marquegas will have to watch. It's going to take a hop, and it'll end up coming off the top of the wall. Sweeney's going to be waved in. The relay throw will come all the way through, but not in time. So Cust with a booming double to right center field. Sweeney scores, and the ball game is tied. Well, he led the uh, A's last year at home runs with 25. He's a power guy, as you mentioned. He, he, he gets his pitches. He works the count to 2-0. Oh. Jake Arrieta in the middle of the plate. It's the one thing you will learn here at the big league level when you're throwing in the low 90s, not into the mid 90s. You can't get away with those pitches. So he crunches it. And there's your first run to tie it up 1 1. So he delivers as Sweeney and Cuss getting starts in the ball game. Come through with a run, one away runner at second, and here is Ellis. Mark Ellis. Crossed the plate last night on the very strange play when the Orioles thought Pennington had struck out, but it had really been a ball four call. Throw went down to second base to try and get the runner the Orioles thought was alive, when in fact the runner was going to go to second anyway, and Ellis walked home, literally. And what to call that is an issue. And the A's are going to appeal it to Major League Baseball on the call, claiming Ellis has a right to have a stolen base, and they are going to make an appeal to uh, Major League Baseball. Ellis today with a big grin on his face said I got to have that if I'm going to reach 100 stolen bases this year. Here's the 1 1 delivery on the way and that is outside. Here's the play. Tremendous catch made in center field. There's Pennington. They thought that was going to be a swinging strike. It wasn't. They threw to second to get a strike him out, throw him out, double play. And when the throw went to second, Ellis just walked home from third. Yeah, he really got a great uh, jump. Didn't hesitate. And you know, they're flying across how they score. Yeah. Him scoring. And that's the point, I guess, of uh, discussion. It's just one of those uh, very minute details of the game that those who love the ball game just have some fun with. I mean, he scored, and as Ellis said, that's what matters. I think they called him David Ellis. I apologize. David was a hockey player. I knew Mark's the baseball player. And at the time, it, the, that actually tied the game 3 3. And then yeah. Chris would hit the three run home run into right field. 2 2 delivery to him, and that'll be fouled away. Trying to get a run in for second base with one away. Two ball, two strike count. This is the rubber match of these two ball games. The Orioles with a 9 6 win in the ball game last night after losing the opener 4 2. So the Orioles have got a chance to pick up yet another series win here in this homestand as they did against the Nationals. 2 2 delivery. Ellis will take it. It will miss, and the count is full 3 and 2. Yeah, one of the things that he does so well, other than just being a veteran player that understands how to play the game, is driving runners. So, uh, you know, over 300. He's Suzuki and Sweeney is at right at 299. Ellis has been one of their best bats on the road where he's hitting 333 in road games. And he takes it outside and will draw the walk. So three of the four batters Arietta has faced here in the inning have gotten on. Runners at first and second now with one away. Well, again, there's a pitch that you most likely swing at down at AAA or AA. So it's a good slider. He actually executed it well, but it's just off the plate. And here at the big league level, a lot of hitters won't chase that. There's, that's what we talked about, too. I mean, look at that right there. You got 11, 11 base runners in four and a third innings. And in that game, Adam Dunn had four RBIs. He made a couple of mistakes. He got a couple of hits. Amazing. The first two starts, Marietta averaged one base runner per inning. And the last two starts, He's allowed 19 runners in seven of the third innings. Ground ball, first base. Got a chance for two. Arietta getting over to cover, but no play. So they get the force out at second base. Wigginton to get Ellis. Cus goes over to third. It is really difficult because of the slowness. I mean, watch how this ball just slows down. So it takes a long time for the play to develop. You don't want the ball by you if you're Wigginton or any of the infielders. I mean, you really have to come get the ball here at Camden Yards. You know, we saw some high choppers in the first game, but anything hit on the grass just doesn't.
get through the infield. It's not uh, not particularly fast. I asked a couple of the Oriole players about that, Jim, because we were noting the Baltimore chops, and they said they thought what happened was that the dirt area directly in front of home plate had hardened up. It's, they said it was harder than they had ever seen it here this season for a couple of games. And that's when those balls were being hit directly in front of home plate and just bounding way up in the air. And you can see tonight it's darker. Yes. But the, when, you, when you take the, the fact that, again, it's not that quick, it's, it's, it's good for your pitching, tough for your hitting in a sense. And, but it's also difficult to turn double plays that, unless you really charge the ball. Cliff Pennington now first and third, two down. Pennington, a three-game hit streak coming in. We'll take that one to left field. Corey Patterson going back and got turned the wrong way. That will score Cust. That will bring Gross in. That will be a double and another misplay in left field. And it is a 3-1 lead for the A's. Well, you know, one of the reasons you take balls off the bat, and yes, the, the wind can change, is because if you take balls off the bat, you get better reads. And right here, the ball carries more than he thought. It, obviously, any time you slice the ball to left, it's going to go from right to left. So he doesn't pick it up. He gets turned around, and you know that it's going over his head. And everybody's running. But if you go, if, if we go way high, there is a lot of wind. And, of course, and when we were doing our notes for the game. I mean, the wind's coming in here and gusting, blowing our plate. So it's blowing tonight, even though it may not be blowing down at this level. 25 RBIs for Pennington. He's going to steal third, and Arietta never looked. So he just took off. Arietta made no attempt to uh, hold him close to the bag, and a stolen base number 12 for him. But again, you got a rookie pitcher. I mean, this is, you know, he's given up three runs he didn't want to give up. You know, he loses his focus. He's worried more with two outs and getting uh, Davis out at the plate. It's not a bad idea, but you don't want to let him walk into third. And if you get into a rhythm, what, they stole four bases on Tuesday night. They will make this a track meet. 2-0 count now on Raja Davis, who grounded out his first time up. And the bat goes flying, and the ball goes to second, and it will be hauled in by Moore. But the A's take advantage of uh, what weren't errors, but certainly weren't anything to help the pitcher. And it's 3-1 to one A's. Had a chance to be out and enjoy as fine a weather as you'll ever see. Gorgeous sunset with that beautiful orange off the warehouse. A 3-1 lead for the A's as we go to the bottom half. Jones, Wheaters, and Bell here in the second inning. Adam Jones has had a 3-for-8 in this series. He is now up to 274. We talked about the month of June. It was very kind to Adam, and he was very kind to it. As he was able to pound the ball, he's got a good swing going now, driving the ball hard, be it for extra base hits or for the long ball. 0-1 delivered. That will miss away. For Adam, 
three for five with a home run double, three RBIs last night for a total of eight home runs in the month of June. One run delivery, and that'll be outside to him. So now you enter a new month, and you hope you're able to keep it going as these benchmarks are just some that we use because they're convenient. He hit 320 in the month of June. Well, he drove in, I think, 21 runs. The problem for him is that you go, and you can look at uh, Hamilton, and he's got a 23-game hitting streak. And Fielder is finally getting a couple of years away from free agency, but Hamilton's the guy. Let me look at that. And of course, on base percentage. Hmm. It's pretty good numbers. Yes, indeedy. That one grounded towards the middle. Fine play. Pennington got over and makes a good throw. So they, it's not the fact that you've turned the page and got it into July. You got to figure out how to hit Trevor Cahill. He's going to sink the ball and throw that change up and try to get as many grounders as he can. Before we leave Josh Hamilton, a note that Hamilton had such a month. He is the fifth player in the last 10 years to win the Triple Crown in a calendar month. Hamilton led the American League in average 454, RBIs 31, and home runs 9. All three categories fouled off by Weeders. The others who have done that in the past, Maglio Ordonez, Derek Lee, Bobby Abreu, and Jim Edmonds. But uh, Josh Hamilton had better numbers than any of them in taking that triple crown for a month. Matt Weeders. Weeders has got a seven-game hit streak. 0-1 delivery. Cahill will miss outside. Most of the Oriole hitters have faced Cahill uh, not many times. Weeders 0 for 2. Jones 1 for 9 off him. has seen as much as anybody in the lineup. That will be punched in the air to left field. Gross has got this one lined up and puts it away, and there are two down. And tonight's Maryland Lottery Hit It Here fan of the game, Eric Snyder from Ocean City. An Orioles player hits the Hit It Here sign located in the bullpen area. Eric Snyder gets 100000 Find out more about how you can become the fan of the game. Visit mdlottery.com and hit it here. The big hand for Josh Bell. Makes his major league debut in this ball game. Bell called up after the game last night with Luke Scott having to go on the DL and makes the start at third base in this ball game. Not expected that he will stay for much longer than five or six games and that he will be going back down and Felix P.A. will be coming into the lineup during the road trip, probably in Detroit. There you see the Oriole at Norfolk. 266, 10 home runs, 44 RBIs, 24 doubles, and a good slugging percentage. Fouls it away. His 24 doubles were the second most in the International League, and he was tied for 10th in the league in home runs. Well, I asked his former manager, now the third base coach for the Orioles, Gary Alex Allison, uh, what was going on. He said, well, you know, uppers cuts the swing and mess around with breaking balls. He can hit him about as far as anybody. Terrific power. But already he's worked the count into his favor. Should get a good pitch to hit here. Okay, he'll get one in. That's one of those Baltimore chops. Second base. Ellis will make the running throw and to get the out. So after giving up a run in the first inning, K. Hill comes back and retires the Orioles in order. And the A's have the lead 3-1. to one.
got it out. He'd gone in to get it, so they just left it there. <laughs> well, before I, I mean, I've been around for a long time, but remember they used to leave him behind the infield. You actually leave your glove out, and the infielders would in, in the short part of the outfield. That's good. I like that. Arietta working. At the top of the order, Barton leading it off here, batting second, and he will take the strike. He flies out to left field his first time up. So already the velocity a little bit better. I mean, if he could locate that pitch right there at 94, down and away, it would be golden. Didn't do that in the first inning. 1-1 one, one breaking ball is going to catch the inside corner. That pitch is not hittable. A nope. one ball, two strike count. Yeah, you could maybe get some earthworms in front of home plate because that curveball went straight down. It, it, the quality of stuff can be really good, which is what it was primarily in those first two games. He got the victories when he opened up against New York. Three runs, four hits, and the Giants, and one run, three hits over seven. And then lost against San Diego and against Washington, giving up six runs in each of those last two ball games. And he takes it full here, a three ball, two strike count. Barton, it's a lot of pitches get eaten up by this hitter, one way or the other. 3 2 delivery to him, and he'll foul it off. We mentioned the other night, he's fifth in the American League in most foul balls. Dustin Pedroia, the injured Red Sox second baseman, is first. Pedroia has the amazing 47% of his swings end up being foul balls. Three ball, two strike count. Outfield straight away on him. And Barton will take it. He draws the walk. See, he knows the strike zone. And I got another good fastball, but you go from 0 and 2 or 1 and 2 all the way to 3 and 2, and then. That's the 49th walk. Came in tied for third in the most base on balls. So that number will go up. And it presents another problem. So now the leadoff fan is on. Arietta had retired 50% of leadoff batters in the first four games. That is not a good number. He needed to be up around 70. Kevin Kuzminoff will take the pitch inside for a ball. 0 for 18, including an 0 for 10 in this series. So he has seen his average dip still at 275. Eight home runs, 39 RBIs for him. Goes one off on a big cut. Good pitch down and into him, and a one ball, one strike count. The amazing thing, as you mentioned, he owes, you know, what he ended on, what, an 0 for 17, still at 336 in the month of June, still had five home runs. Obviously, that happened earlier in the month. Great start and a bad finish. Fastball will be taken up high, and it will go to two and one. The Orioles in series this year have won only three. They are three wins, 20 losses, and two ties. So this is an opportunity to win a series for Juan Samuel's ball club and uh, to win two series in a row for the first time this season. Throw to get the runner back to first. A's have been doing a lot of running and even though Martin is not a base stealer, he's 0 for 2. Even he has taken off in some situations here in this series. Here's the 2-1 delivery. Kuzminov fouls it over into his own dugout. The two ball, two strike count. Yeah, you had mentioned, I mean, he's now 0 for 10 in this uh, in this series. He is swinging a lot of balls off the plate. And you know, Jake Fox is now wearing an Oriole uniform because they said he was overly aggressive. Of course, Fox can't play third base like Kuzminov can, but he's just helping out the pitchers. I mean, you take that pitch, it's 3 and 1 now. And Varietta makes a good pitch. Maybe you get the double play. Harder to hit when you swing at balls. And that's what he's going through now. 2 2 count on him. Runner not going. And down to third base, backhanded by Bell. Bell one, relay to first. Got the double play. So, in his major league debut, an opportunity at third base, a very close play at first that they're going to argue about, but it's a double play. Yeah, he really makes a nice play. Look how far off he is right here. Go get it. Get your feet under you, which he does. Strong throwing on him. And then Scott Moore, uh, I don't know about that. 
Makes a nice play because uh, Martin gets down there in a hurry. Watch him get in there. I mean, that's a terrific play just to get that ball off. Very athletic. Steverson, the first base coach, was arguing, and then Garen came out also to argue. Ed Hickox is the first base umpire, and uh, sure looked like the Orioles were the beneficiary of that call and get the double play. And uh, Bell. That'll settle some of the butterflies down a little bit once you're able to handle that first one. Well, again, uh, you know, Scott Moore has done so many little things in the last five, six games, breaking up double plays, and right there, able, just able to get the ball off allows them. And look at this. And again, the soft front leg, so when you land, and, you know, and you're not trying to hurt somebody, you're just trying to break up the double play, so Barton does his job. Great pivot. Slider will miss outside. Two down, nobody on. Suzuki grounded out his first time up. No chance here to face only three hitters in the inning. Here at Suzuki, we'll take it away for a ball. Suzuki this year, six for 30 against the Orioles. No home runs and four RBIs. As these two teams are going to complete their season series. They hit a ball very sharply. It was the inside middle. If you want to stay out of there, and this might be the reason. That he's gone three and zero. You you always try to pay attention to what happened and what transpired in previous at bats. I don't think he'll be swinging, even though as you mentioned, six home runs, but way outside for the third walk. That's two walks in the inning, and that'll keep the inning alive with a man on and two down. On Saturday, July 17, the first 25,000 fans, 21 and over, will receive a Brooks Robinson replica jersey presented by Real Street Staffing. Don't miss your chance to honor a Birdland legend and dress like a hero. For tickets, 888-848-BIRD or go to Orioles.com. Here is Ryan Sweeney. He picked up a single and scored in the first inning. Runner at first now and two down for Sweeney. Sweeney's been on a pretty good run at the plate. Weeders after five in a row out of the strike zone decides he needs to go out and have a word with Arietta. Yeah, he's been really uh, doing a nice job of that. We saw it last night where he'd go out at important moments of the game and have a little conversation. Boy, a lot of stuff goes on when you're catching just in general, especially when you're in your first full year behind the plate. 1 0 count with two down, and you're catching a lot of young yeah. pitchers. You're trying to help out. Gets the strike on the outside corner as it tailed away. Early on, the left handers against Arietta are at 324. Right handers, only 200. The two home runs that he has surrendered in his four starts have been hit by left handers. Sweeney with a runner at first and a 1 1. Yeah, that's been a problem because uh, in the his first major league debut against the Yankees had a good changeup, but, but that's the pitch that got him in trouble. Will Venable hit a three run home run after he presented with a four run lead down in San Diego, got him out of the game. He pulled the changeup across the plate to Adam Dunn. He hit a triple down and double down the right field line for a couple of RBIs. 1 1 delivery off speed, took then, something off that pitch and missed inside, 2 and 1. And then you don't get that pitch. Like a pretty good curveball. Yankees won their ball game today. A couple of day games were played. Yankees got a 4 to 2 win there in first place ahead of the Red Sox by one and Tampa Bay by two. There's a hard shot up the middle for a base hit. Suzuki digging's going to make the turn. Jones up. Boy, there's some good base running right there. That is not a ball that you would have thought he would have taken third on, but he left first base intending to end up at third, and he did. Yeah, a lot of it also has uh, something to do. I mean, right here, we're just going to see a fastball in the middle of the plate. Sweeney, Ryan doesn't miss too many of those. And then how you come and get the ball has a lot to do with whether you're going. So Suzuki, I mean, the play's in front of him. If Adam charges it, he figures, well, he's probably going to stop it second. Well, he didn't. So now the curveball in the dirt with two outs or whatever, and we saw one last night get behind readers. It doesn't really take away your pitch, but it makes you a little more cautious. And creates a better chance scoring wise with the A's having two down and cussed up. He had an RBI double in his first at bat. And Cust will take that pitch on the inside corner for a strike. Cust the designated hitter. 
for the A's. A's DH is a bit as a combined group, only 243. Only four home runs, 29 RBIs out of the DH role for the A's. Suzuki's on at third. Sweeney two for two with the singles on at first. Cusk will take the fastball strike. And Arietta gets ahead of him on two. Yeah, we've almost seen, and it, you know, again, you have to understand this is only his fifth major league start. We've almost seen his stuff go backwards a little bit because you come up here and you get the scatter reports, and you know, a lot of times I think you get a little tentative. I think you have to be perfect, you have to make perfect pitches, but when you have good stuff, and that's what we saw in the Yankee series, let it go. I mean, throw the ball, don't aim it, and that's hard for young pitchers to do. Two strike count, chance to get out of the inning here against Cust. 250 with runners in scoring position for the left handed DH. Here's the 0 2 delivery to him, and Cust will take it that one a little further inside, and a one ball, two strike count on him. You see, and, and Jack Cust is a poster boy for what a major league hitter as far as discipline. Now, he may strike out a lot, but very rarely is he going to swing at pitches that he doesn't feel comfortable swinging at. You know, that maybe gets a little bit better for the pitcher when he gets two strikes. But very rarely does he chase pitchers' pitches early in the count. That's different from the minor leagues. One, two. Runners off first and third. The look and no throw the other way. Cust has been a hot hitter, 333 over the last 20 ball games. Well, he's a pretty good bat in a lineup that has struggled this season to generate runs, especially. On the road, where the A's come into this game 14 and 25 in road games. Here's the 1 2 delivery to him. Cust again will take it, and again inside. For the A's, they finished the month 10 and 17. The Orioles, 9 and 17. Three worst records in the month of June. The Orioles in Toronto at 9 and 17, and then the A's, 10 and 17. And as a result, the A's went from having a one game lead over Texas to being 10 games out and another team between them and the top. 2 2 delivery. Cust. He is gone. Arietta gets a big strikeout. No runs, one hit, no errors, and two are left on. The A's have a two run lead. I had 21 kids, and we went to uh, the Ravens practice when they were preparing, the, you know, for the playoffs, which is which is real cool. And you know, to see the the way they interact, you know, with with the players and, and you know the other kids, it's awesome. Nick Marquez are covering the bases. Some of the Orioles in the community and the Right Side Foundation has worked with a lot of kids here in the area, and uh, Nick and his wife Christina involved directly. Yeah, not only in their name, but also giving their time to the kids. Yeah, that's really what uh, playing in the community is about. They also have that 5K race. Yeah. And no Good doubt you'll job. be running in that later on this summer. Daddy Nick 
learning more and more about kids on his own as the days go by. One ball, one strike count. Scott Moore leading it off here. Cahill's pitch swung on and missed. Moore is Torres and Patterson coming up. Cahill has not lost in eight starts. Six wins, no decisions in a couple. And uh, much better at home than on the road, but still not bad on the road where he's gone three and two with an ERA of 4.1. But he has been virtually untouchable playing in that pitcher's ballpark out in Oakland. He has not suffered a loss. You've got to go way back to a May 16. Comebacker. And Moore is retired. Well, a great combination of pitching well and then also getting a significant uh, run, run support. But the one thing he has, he's got a sinker, he's got a changeup. Boy, and he works fast. Good guy to play behind. Got a broadcast. Yeah, that too. Getaway day. <laughs> they, they go to Cleveland. The Orioles go to Boston. Cleveland beat Toronto today by a score of six to one. You talk about a ball club that's suddenly in a free fall. Toronto is that club. Is Torres with a six-game hit streak coming into tonight's ball game? Well, they probably stopped hitting home runs. They did. Toronto is now. Uh, they've lost five in a row. Their record is now 500, and they are nine games behind the Yankees with the Yankees winning today. As Torres towards second base, Ellis up with it. He'll make the play. And you can see Cahill now, the ground ball's first inning. Orioles were able to get a couple balls up in the air. Uh, Patterson got the double, the sack fly Marquecas. Since then, though, the ground ball pitcher's getting ground balls. Yeah, he got behind uh, Corey Patterson, 3 and 0, worked at our 2 and 0, and then worked at Dragonsley, 3 and 0, got 3 1, and then he hit a 3 1 fly ball that was misplayed by Gross. Which Corey would also misplay one off the bat of Cliff Pennington, which cost a couple of runs. Been a blustery night here, I and mean, a beautiful night, but the wind is blowing. At least we can feel it here in the booth. Patterson, a double and scored, extending his hit streak to six games. Yeah, 10 for 20 over the five game heading streak coming in. So, yeah, what are you going to do? I mean, he's, he's one of your. I mean, he's, he's coming your, out. The uh, decision's yeah. already been made, and that's really tough for Corey. Yeah. Felix PA will be in Detroit. He will start. PA will start in left field, and Corey Patterson will be on the bench. Uh, Juan Samuel will give him as many opportunities to play as possible, but the defense has got to get better. He is called out, and that is the first strikeout for Cahill, who has now retired seven in a row, a three to one ace lead. That's double the year's average. Home runs 12, 
Team average, a tremendous 316. Runner in scoring position number unheard of for the Orioles this year at 325. And the bullpen magnificent at 1.86. So overall, a real good homestand. Yeah, all five of those wins coming from behind, which is what they're going to have to do again tonight. And that'll be a strike taken. Ellis drew a walk his first time up. It will be the bottom third of the order for Oakland here against Jake Arrieta. And he will miss outside with it. A one ball, one strike count. A's team has been very strong against the Orioles over the last few years. 21 and 7 here in Baltimore over the last six years, including the numbers from this season. Right now, the Orioles trail in the series three games to six. Bob Guerin's team already guaranteeing themselves a series, a season series victory over the Orioles. 2 1 pitch. And it just misses outside, maybe a little low. 3 and 1. Well, the A's, uh, you know, especially at home, and, and again, they have a big ballpark. They're kind of where, where the Orioles want to get, where you, you know you're going to get uh, young pitchers. I mean, for Cahill, 21 last year. And then way outside again, strike one, and then threw some really close pitches. But uh, Mark Ellis said, I'm not swinging at those. That's, that's the big leagues. But again, I think, you know, down the road, you think this is a club because you know, they don't spend a lot of money that you, you, you got to at least win as many as you lose against. So it's disappointing to be three and six against them. No discredit to them because yep. they played well. So leadoff walks in the last two innings by Arietta. He's walked four. That's the most he's walked in any of his five starts. He did that in his first start against the Yankees when he walked four. And he's already walked four, and we're only in the fourth inning. Here's Gross, fielder's choice, first time up. And uh, he will take the pitch for a strike on the outside corner. And he's looking for a ball to hit into right field. Ellis can run a little bit. He doesn't steal a lot of bases. And that's what happens when uh, you're down by two. You know Bob Guerin from what we've seen in the first two games of the series. He thinks he can steal a base. He thinks he can start a runner and get an infield to, to, to vacate his position. He's going to do it. That one will be fouled away. This Oakland team, 57 stolen bases, only 13 times caught. And they know that in order to manufacture some runs, that's what they're going to have to do. And they're always looking over to Mike Gallego at third base to make the call over there. The fewest uh, home runs in the American League at 51, third fewest extra base hits, and the fourth fewest runs, all numbers of the A's offense. Now that's why you try and put people in motion and make things happen. 0 oh, 2 count, Gross, and the throw over to get Ellis back. Yeah, I mean, the, some of the amazing numbers uh, they're 17 and 10 at home, they're starters. And again, that low ERA at 278, and then they go on the road, and if they're under 500 on the road, 10 and 15 ERA of almost five runs a game. Ballparks matter, even in this day and age. Uh, there are differences. Runner not going here. Ball put in the air. Jones. It's underneath that one. Runner halfway. Gross is retired. Ellis back to first base. Time for our AT&T Mobility Trivia question. It is who currently leads the majors in hits? Cano, Prado, Hamilton, or Beltray? Major league leader in hits. I would think it'd be Cano. I would think it would be Beltray. The answer is probably the other two. We'll find out shortly. <laughs> Quickly going through my notes, trying to find the answer before they. Oh no, you there. cannot look. Well, I've already stats. given it. So I'm just looking. Oh, okay. I've already well, given you a name. It takes over the. It takes the. What am I going to say? It takes the, the excitement out of being wrong. There you go. <laughs> the excitement out of being wrong. Right. There is at some point. Yeah, see, I told you. Was. Told you it wasn't Cano. Even told though you I, it was one of those other two. <laughs> It always is. Whoever Mark. we say it is, it's the other person. Who to think? Martin Prado, 111 hits, July 1, leading the majors. That one in the air to right center field. That is Marquegas coming over, runner halfway. And Pennington is retired. Two down. Ellis with the leadoff watch, still at first base. Yeah, Jake Arietta said, I'm not letting hit another bottle left and have it go over Patterson's head. Well, I'll try to get him out inside, and he did. Raja Davis, leadoff batter, will stand in. The speedster is old for two. Pop out, ground out. 
One hit in his last 24 at bats. And you can see why. He, I mean, he had one of the, I mean, a really weak swing in a 2 0 fastball. So those are the counts where you look for your pitch, not the pitcher's pitch. Davis may well try and bunt to try and get out of the funk that he's in right now. He still hit 256 in the month of June, considering the finish that he had. That could have been a lot worse. When the Orioles were playing the A's in Oakland, he was on. He was hitting the ball and was a real force. 1 0 count. Again, the throw over to get Ellis back to the bag. Yeah, when you only walk 13 times and you've been up, uh, what, 251 times, that tells me you're, and we've seen him, uh, that you're not an ideal leadoff guy. But if you get on, then everything changes because he can just, he can run you out of the ballpark at that kind of speed. He's 8 for 34 against the Orioles this year. We'll take the pitch away, and again, Weeders is going to go out to the mound. Trying to help out the starter, Jake Arietta, a couple of times now going out. Well, you know, Jake was talking about trying to, and Rick Hannett's the Oriole pitching coach, trying to just speed him up a little bit because what happens, he throws a little bit off his body and he kind of has that, you know, leg kick and then he drops his front leg and gets out too fast, so he gets under everything. So you speed up your windup, maybe a little bit taller, throw downhill. This is not about stuff, this is about command. 2 0 delivery on the way. Davis will put it back into the seats on the foul ball and the two ball, one strike come. We, we were talking about Rob Dibble was talking about it uh, when the Nationals were in that that front foot almost hits the dirt. You know, normally when you're close to six four, that leg will actually just come up and then fall towards home. So he drops it a little bit, and if he's sliding too far, it just gets under things. Davis, the two one pitch to him, ground ball towards second. Moore will go the other way to get it, and we'll get the out. No runs, no hits, no errors, despite a leadoff walk. The base runner left on. Rubber match. The A's up by two. to shortstop and doing something with Cesar Torres. Well, of course, Andy McPhail dispelled those rumors today. He said there is no trade imminent. All this was was a matter of they needed to fill Luke's roster spot. They didn't want to take anybody that was not on the 40-man roster. Ryan Hughes and Josh Bell were the only two available options, and Josh Bell has a hot bat going right now. So it's as simple as that, Gary. Well put, Amber. There are uh, some decisions that are almost self-made by the situation, and that was kind of the case with Bell. He doesn't care how it was made. He gets up here and gets a chance to be seen. Well, and you get to judge and, and learn about what's going on. Great stop down at third. Guzman off throw is going to get to Hada. Man, has he played some third base in these three games. Yeah, I was talking to him today, and I said, Mr. Shorthop. Well, this is not a shorthop. This is his rip. 
Again, you see your angle. What's his angle? He goes back. So Mike Bordick talked about this in spring training, like playing X's. If you dive laterally, the ball might buy you. You go back about two, three feet. And again, this is one of the, uh, I guess, one of the parts of the formula of playing third base. Great uh, angle to that ball. Just got up and got there so quickly, threw him out easily. That's a double otherwise. That has been uh, denied. He's hit the ball hard in this series a number of times with not a lot of show for it as he's two for 12. So Cahill gets the first out of the inning, which he does most of the time. He's coming in at 62% of leadoff batters. That's not real high, especially for the success that Trevor Cahill is having. Down low, Marquegas. Marquegas with the RBI for the Orioles. First inning on a sack fly. The A's RBIs cussed on an RBI double, and Pennington the two RBIs. All the runs coming in the second inning for the A's. Marquegas towards the hole, diving and up, going to get a zealous. Nick gets the base hit with one away, a base runner on here in the fourth inning. Take a look at the state in baseball on July 1, 1859. First college baseball game was played Amherst over Williams College, 73 to 32. Record books are in dispute a bit about the call, but not about the winner as far as that final score goes. 57, the first Major League Baseball Z battery, the O's pitcher, Greg Zavernik, and the catcher, Frank Zuppo. Two Z's. And in 1990, Andy Hawkins pitched a no-hitter and lost to the Chicago White Sox by a score of four to nothing. All happened on July 1 in those respective years. 1-0 count. We thought Mike Flanagan had started that game for Amherst. Yeah, and, uh, and Mike was up. here today, and we asked him, and he said no, but he was in the bullpen for that game. And then we were discussing the quality start. I mean, just think, it's the first college game. You give up 25 runs on the way to, for what, let's see, that's 450. Yeah, maybe 30 runs, and yeah. they go, hey, nice Qual start. Quality start. Quality start. Nobody, there was, <laughs> I mean, nothing to, to compare it against. <laughs> Ty Wigginton will take it outside. I wonder how many pitchers they probably didn't have many. Probably one or two. Yeah. He just threw the ball, hit well, the ball. Well, back then they it was under, obviously maybe they, have been underhand. I don't know for sure, but a lot of the games then were played where you let the header, the hitters were allowed to hit the ball. And they all used usually the same ball. I mean, it's a dead ball error. You could scrape it, and and what, on it. Use one ball a game, you're going to have a dead ball error. And then uh, George Zuverink, uh, actually, he sold me a life insurance policy when I had my bonus. You know, not what a very large one. Uh, and I eventually used that to buy my first house. Really? So thank you, George. How about that? Part of the first Z battery. Wow. I never bet Frank uh, Zuppo, huh? 2 2 delivery. Wigan and golf that one to left field and diving and a fine catch by Gabe Gross. So Gross tracks it down and Wigginton is retired. Marquegas back to first base. It's not easy out there in left field tonight. And again, you know, his first step is back because one went over his head, and he still thinks he's quarterback in there. The pass rush at Auburn University, <laughs> a lot of pressure on him out there. Pretty good catch. Yeah, it really was. So that'll leave it up to Adam Jones, who grounded out his first time up with a two down here in the fourth inning. Orioles down by a couple against Trevor Cahill. On that no-hitter by Andy Hawkins, I was looking today to see how that happened. He had two outs in the eighth inning and was throwing a no-hitter. Sammy Sosa reached on an error. He walked the next two batters. Robin Venturi had a fly ball to left that Jim Larritz misplayed. Third baseman playing in the outfield, three runs scored. Yvonne Calderon then hit a fly ball to right. Jesse Barfield lost it in the sun. That allowed Ventura to score. Score in the error, the final count for him. Four runs, no hits, three errors in the inning, and Hawkins, Andy Hawkins, would lose the game. It's a tough loss, no hitter. Four nothing, you lose. <laughs> and the breaking ball to Jones catches the inside corner. A one ball, one strike count on Adam. Well, that's what the what the uh, the 12, 12 inning Harvey Haddock's perfect game, and then Adcock, Joe Adcock hit a home run, and he ended up losing it. One of the classic games. And then the Warren Spawn, Juan Marichal, 16 innings, 1 0. Willie Mays did a home run off 42 year old Warren Spawn in the 16th inning. Marichal threw 227 pitches. 
He told me that's the only time he got an extra day's rest in his career. Well, he had worked, as I remember, Juan, talking about that. The game before had also been an extra inning ball game that he went for like 11 or 12 innings. So he worked two games in a row that were one nothing and 0-0 in extra innings in both of the ball games. I think he might deserve a day off. Yeah, apparently I went to Spawn in about the 12th. They said, Warren, you know, you're 42. And he said, I'm not leaving until the 22-year-old guy leaves. And then they went to marriage. So he said, I'm staying out there as long as that 42-year-old guy. So until they, they end up going 16 innings. Adam Jones, a swing and a miss. And Cahill gets his second strikeout. No runs, one in, no errors. And one left on Cahill in charge right now with the A's up 3-1. to one. With Theo Harris and our great crew here at Camden Yards. Gary Thorne on this gorgeous evening. The Orioles trying to do it again. Last five wins they've had have been come from behind wins. And they do it again. Get one here tonight and take a series under their belt as they will head out on the road to take on the Red Sox, Tigers, and Texas. Well, so Texas has been red hot, haven't they? Oh, I think won 14 out of their last 16. How about Carrera? He goes back and plays the Angels. Grand slam. Solo home run. He's mad. Four for four. He's well, he got himself into shape. I mean, that's yeah. one thing that Ron Washington said. He dropped about 20 pounds. So those D's healthier than they've been. Derek Barton will take it inside. Barton has flied out and drawn a walk. Tough trip for the Orioles. Red Sox are battling to get back into first. Detroit's doing the same thing in their battle in the division. And Texas trying to maintain the lead in theirs. So that's a tough trip. And that is going to be a base hit. Moore gave it a try, but Barton comes away with a leadoff single here in the fifth. Three innings in a row now. Leadoff man's been on. The Red Sox, the next opponent starting tomorrow night at Fenway. They are third in average in the league, second in home runs, first in runs in the league. ERA is 10th. They are, as you see, a game and a half behind the Yankees. Uh, with the Yankees winning today, Beltre's had a big June. 376, 19 RBIs. And look at that DL. Pedroia, Martinez, Lowell, Ellsbury, Beckett, all on the DL. Maybe even Hermida. I don't know if he's come off. And then, of course, their bullpen, Del Carmen's had elbow problems. He's really struggled. Martin is coming out of the ball game as Rosales will come on to be the pinch runner. I'm not sure what that is. Now Rosales in. Martin had been playing at first base. Picks up the base hit and comes out of the ball game. Well, talking to their trainer. And it looked like it may have been something that was talked about pregame. 
the way the change was made, it's a problem as he's yeah, limping like a little lip of the hip or something. And the ball will get away and a chance at second base on Rosales. No. The weight and the call that looked like a ball that Wigginton could handle that got away from him. That ball maybe tailed a little bit. Ty couldn't get it. And really difficult play because of the angle of throwing right into the runner. It will be an, ang an error on Wigginton. So the error allows the runner to move down to second base. And that will give the RBI opportunity to Kuzminov. Kevin Kuzminov with nobody out. Down to third. Great stop. Bell up. Away off the mark. Holds the runner at second. Gets back in Rosales. So Bell made the play with the glove, but the arm pulled Wigginton off, and he will be charged with an error at third. Yeah, watch how quickly he gets to this ball. Now he's already turned a double play. Had plenty of time. Take a little bit more time. And then again, he just throws it high. And you know, again, the, the, the scouting report on him, the snap throw, ball drops, so you don't get the tag. But the scouting report strong on it, but sometimes in, in, inaccurate. Now the only good news about that, double play still in order. And Rosales did not move up from second base. So the Orioles. A couple of errors committed here in the inning. This is exactly what happened in the ball game last night in the fourth when they gave up six runs, five earned, and four hits and two errors. Kurt Suzuki coming up. He has grounded out and has drawn a walk. Two on and nobody out. Suzuki and then Sweeney. Bell is even with the bag at third here. Yeah, almost like you're expecting a bunt. Suzuki, their home run leader. Not that he wouldn't bunt and can't, but well, he's not your prototypical guy, even though he leads this team in home runs with ten. So I suppose it's out of the question now. Josh Bell is moving back. I mean, I still think you know Greg Nettles used to do this as well as anybody. You play back, but you creep in. Here's the 1-0 delivery on the way. Arietta falls behind 2-0 in a little deeper hole here as the A's. Try and add to that 3 1 lead they've got. And the, and the problem for him is that Suzuki's pretty good fastball hitter. So he's going to look middle in and try to turn on a ball. And again, also over 300 runners in scoring position. Tough out. 313 average when he gets these chances. Ground ball to short, though, as Torres has it over to Moore. One relay. Good play by Wigginton to save a run. Again, Moore got dumped. Moore asking the second base umpire, Fielded Galbraith, whether or not the runner was still in the base pass when he did it. Yeah, again, this not a very good throw, though, and he has to wait. And, then he, and again, not playing a lot of second base. I mean, I remember Davey Johnson saying there's five or six different ways to come across that bag. So it looks like it might be able to turn that double play. And again, the, uh, the lack of infield defense hurt him. You can see why he was asking on that. Kuzminov's slide was well off the bag, but so long as he can reach out and touch the bag one way or the other, they will generally not call an interference, and there wasn't any there. So Moore had the double clutch and couldn't get the throw off in time. Sweeney's had two singles and has scored a run. First and third, one down. And the pitch will be taken up high for a ball. 3 5 and 0 oh for the A's. 1 2 and 2. For the Orioles. And the A's get another chance. The A's have had the better of it with the base runners tonight. They have left four along with the three runs they've put across. And yeah, Sweeney's gotten fastballs to hit every time, so they're trying to get him out with breaking balls. There's a good one. Sweeney questioning the call with Gary Cedarstrom, the home plate umpire. Well, he's hitting 13 double plays. That leads the A's. One ball, one strike count on him. Double play would get him out of the inning and would be fouled away. Sweeney has always been tough on the Orioles in this year. The numbers are the same. He's had 11 hits and 30 at bats with six RBIs. 
against the Orioles on the season. Well, he's got 37 hits to left him, 28 up the middle and 16 to right. So, again, we talked about this a little bit like Nick Martek has sprayed the ball all over the place. And he'll take that inside and works the count to two balls and two strikes. Rosales on at third base after Barton started the inning with a single. Rosales ran for him. Suzuki's over there at first, reaching on the fielder's choice. 2 2 count, one down. Arietta with the long hold. Runner goes. 2 2 will be a long foul ball. So Garen deciding. Wanted to stay out of the double play, sent Suzuki on the pitch. He'll come back for the 2 2. Well, I think this is really, you, you, you need to throw a pitch where you can get a strikeout. And the only strikeout tonight for Jake Arietta was a terrific changeup to Jack Cust. But the only time he's used it, it was a pitch he used his first two games, got hurt down in San Diego, three run home run. But I tell you, hit your fastball. He was just on your curveball. Throw him a changeup down and away. Let him get out in front and try to get a double play ball. Sweeney will take it away. And the count is full. And there was the change, but it missed. So a three ball, two strike count with one down. You would think again that Suzuki probably will be taking off from first base here with one away. Arietta looking for a big out against Ryan Sweeney. And again, they look to third, step to first, and nobody moving. Down to third, watching all this for Silas. Arietta with a 3 2. Runner is going. And that's going to be a base hit in the left field. Rosales will score. RBI single by Sweeney. He is three for three in the ball game, and the A's have a four to one lead. Yeah, and that batting average uh, that came in with runners in scoring position at 299 just went up over 300. I mean, look him stay back. The changeup stays up. He doesn't really finish the pitch, and pretty good uh, at bat on a pretty good pitch to hit. So Sweeney gets RBI number 33 in the season and his seventh. Against the Orioles this year to extend the lead to four to one, and Rick Kranitz comes out on the mound to talk to Jake Arrieta, who is struggling to get outs, and the A's taking advantage of getting the leadoff man on base three consecutive innings are able to finally push one across when they do that here in the fifth, and the bullpen will be activated now. Frank not up in the bullpen for the Orioles. Still only one down, Jack Cust. Cust has doubled in a run and struck out. Very out of this sub now becomes a very big inning. You do not want to let the A's have one of those explosive innings here where they put up a serious number for the lead. And one pitch and one ground ball, and he could get out of this thing. Weeders with an equipment problem there, getting a break from. Gary Cedars from the home plate umpire. Yeah, 83 pitches, so you know you need to make a big pitch. He just hasn't been able to do it to this point. And of course, you have a guy that can, with one swing, hit it out of the ballpark, but he also struck out 185 times last year, 197 times the year before. So it's kind of good news and bad news. Good news is you can get him out if you make your pitches. And the big cut on the helicopter swing. Don't see many of those anymore. The old Charlie Lau theory of letting go of that front hand a little bit, which was big about 15, 20 years ago. Well, you can see, I mean, nice foundation for Jack. Got strong legs, big, strong guy. And he'll ground that one to first base. Wigginton backhands. There's one relay over to first, and they get the double play. That's the one the Orioles needed. It will go three, six, one, a run in, two hits, and two errors. Four to one A's.
to be on this July 4 uh, weekend beginning. Yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, it's funny when you're in the baseball business. Everybody says, hey, have a nice uh, holiday weekend. What holiday? Yeah. It's a day game. Two day games. Two, well, I know, but. Two in a row. Unearned run in the last inning. Makes it a 4-1 ball game, and Trevor Cahill pretty much uh, dominated the Orioles here in the first four innings. Rosales stays in. He's playing at first base, by the way, for Barton. Matt Waiters, he flied out his first time up, Bell, and then Moore. There's Rosales at first. Matt does have a seven game hit streak coming into this ball game. Orioles right now need to get some base runners on and try and have a big inning themselves. Yeah, you're hoping he gets wild. I mean, season high on a couple of occasions is four. The change up that misses. He has tremendous numbers through 75 pitches. He's almost unhittable. 145 through 25, 205 through 50 pitches, 197 through 75 pitches. Waiters retired. Once he gets over that 75 pitch mark, though, the average jumps all the way up to 333 against Cahill. So that's a number you're trying to get to with him. You want to make him throw. He's only up to 55 right now. Well, he and Brett Anderson, the, the, the two 21 year old starters uh, that for last year, and of course he had 32 starts and threw 27 home runs, 21 against left handed pitching. This year, the righties have hit more of the home runs. Not a lot, only eight home runs. And the ground ball towards first. Rosales, pitcher covers, and they get the out on Bell. You know, Bellman has made your league debut. A couple of ground ball outs, and there are two quick outs here in the fifth inning. Yeah, sharply hit, and then Rosales can play everywhere, even playing the outfield. So he gets up. Kay Hill, just as Arietta, who turned the double play over to cover the bag. Well, there you go. You'd look. I mean, uh, of the first 12 outs, there were seven ground balls, two strikeouts, and then first two outs here, ground balls in the fifth. Exactly what he, what he wants. Is. Yeah, he's getting what he wants. Well, that ball in the ground. Well, look at everything. It's just running. Changeup looks like the sinker, but not quite as hard. Kay Hill, the 1 0 delivery, is swung on the miss. Moore with a breaking ball that went away from him. Real good pitch, Kay Hill. He's got a chance to be at the All Star game. He'll reach the qualification inning, so his name starts showing up in all the stats. That goes all the way to the backstop. He wins tonight. He's going to be 8 and 2, and his ERA will be around 2.8. Like the Orioles, a question about who from the A's will be the representative from the team. Well, they could always take Andrew Baylor like they did last year and mm -hmm. close it. It's nice to have a guy. I think. Mm -hmm. He deserves it. He's deserving. Yeah. Three ball, one strike count. Moore with his tourist waiting on deck. They got some really good young starting pitching. Braden, of course, he was going to pitch. There's your walk. That's what you need. First walk that uh, has been surrendered as tourists coming up. We'll check in with Amber. Well, Gary, we have an update on um, Derek Barton. He has a contusion on his knee. He got it while he was trying to break up that double play in the third inning as he was sliding into second base off of Kevin Kuzmanos' uh, ground ball. And so we don't know much more about it right now, but that's why he left the game and Rosales came in to pinch run for him. Gary? All right, Amber, good. Thank you. He obviously tried to play through that as he stayed in the ball game, but was clearly limping when the pinch runner came in for him. His Doris now he grounded out his first time up runner at first and two down. More off first base and the fastball will be in the inside corner. We saw by the pickup of the arms. The Doris thought that was inside. Yeah, I think it ran back and maybe it caught the plate, but it, it looked high. That's, that's what Cesar thought. Okay, Hill gets up on the count 0 and 2. And as tourists will let it go away outside. Time about the Red Sox, the next opponents will be checking to see if Manny Del Carmen's going to be playing. He's got a bad arm bothering him, and they were going to wait till today or tomorrow to figure out if they got to put him on the DL. Francona said uh, the examination will go on for a couple of days and we'll decide. 
Runner goes, but the pitch is in there for a strike. Cahill gets the strikeout. That it is third. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on. That's the man in charge. Cahill gets his tourists. Tim Wakefield, Orioles will see the knuckleballer, Jeremy Guthrie and John Lester. That will be on Saturday night, and then the day game on Sunday, Brian Mattis against John Lackey. Lester's nine and three, and Lackey's nine and three. Tim Wakefield two and six in the opener tomorrow. Arietta goes back to work here in the sixth inning. Ellis Gross and Pennington are due up for the A's. Mark Ellis has drawn two walks, two of the four surrendered by Arietta. He is four for eight in this series. And will take the pitch for a strike. Well, there you go. And I mean, Sweeney, a big night. And Pennington with a three run uh, double over the head of Corey Patterson that was misjudged. Well, another good night. And Jake Arietta just trying to, you know, maybe quickly get through this inning. Of course, every time we say that, pitch count closing in on 90. And maybe get into that seventh inning. And that will be in the outside corner. And the count goes to two and two on Ellis. Oakland team that has to make the move now. Before the All-Star break, they've got three games included against the Angels before the break for Bob Guerin's team to decide whether they have a legitimate shot. That one down the line is going to be a foul ball by just that much. Gary Cetus from right on the line making the call. Close, but not quite. Uh, third base, uh, Marty Foster, rather. Hmm. Up two, three inches. Well, at least you find out where he likes it. Yeah. Of course, I think you kind of had an idea anyway. I mean, okay. 2006, 19 home runs for Mark Ellis, which is a lot. But he's a good high ball hitter. It's the scrappy player. Eighth year in the big leagues. He's located his shoulder that horrific uh, spring training accident in 2004 and play it off. So it took him a while to come back. The elephant on the ball. The circus emblem on the shoulder of the A's uniform. Here's the 2 2 delivery. And spot on and missed. He didn't have enough energy after he <laughs> didn't get the two bagger. And the second strikeout, Arietta. Yeah, why don't I change it? Watch this slider. 
finished it well. We just haven't seen them go after this very often tonight. And you can see, there's your H.H. Gray, Gexpo. Any way you look at it, that was a great pitch. We make buying TVs and appliances simple. H.H. Gray, price and advice, guaranteed. Gross hit into a fielder's choice and scored, and he is flying out. Playing in left field tonight, made a nice defensive play. The inquiring minds who want to know inquired after the game last night. Why is the elephant on the ball on the short sleeves of this ball club? Why? Athletics. Is there? It's always. It's been there for. Yeah, forever. Forever. It seems like. Because the former owner loved the circus. Played. Mm -hmm. Played at first base. <laughs> Ty Wigan and that hot potato on that one is. Didn't want to settle down for him, but he gets it. Gross is retired. Well, uh, again, to use one of your favorite words, there's a confluence of players over there. There we go. Jake gets out of the way. He tags the base. Umpire right there. It's not my word. That's, That's my word. All right. Good. My word. I just know you. Okay. I start thinking about river rafting every time. River rafting. Well, the confluence of the rivers in Pittsburgh. Exactly. Here is Clifford Pennington, the third. Two down. Becker's a town, probably more than one town, but confluence on the way up to Pittsburgh, right when you get across the Maryland, and it, there are a couple of rivers that come together. Really? Yeah. And that's what the town is called. Oh, confluence, yep. Oh. That one down the line, Patterson. And nobody's going to have a play on this one. As the convergence is not close enough to the ball. On Friday, July 16, the Orioles are going to return to Camden Yards after the All Star break. Gather the family up for a great fireworks night. And uh, stay after the ball game. The Jays will be in town. 7 05 game, and then the great fireworks display after. That's July 16. 888 848 to go to Orioles.com. Be a big fireworks weekend. That one in the air to shallow left. This tourist back cannot get it. And Pennington picks up the single. He is two for three in the ball game. Double, single, two RBIs for the number nine hitter. 25 for his last 57 after going three for 46. And I ran into him as I came back from the cage. I said, uh, were you in that much of a slump? He said, I actually thought. Until I started looking at the numbers, I was hit, hitting all right. And he said, you know, you hit some line drives at people, and then the next thing you know, you're out. Yeah, it's, you're out. And you're out, what, 43 times out of 46 at bats. Now it's just the other way around. Such is the game. Yeah, it really is. You know, he said, I didn't change anything. Except I got to keep playing. That's good news for him. And he's red hot. And he's quick. I, I tell you, I didn't realize how good a shortstop he is. He really has a quick first step to get to the ball. Very, very solid. Raja Davis is up. Figure he's going to be taking off Pennington for second base. So Arietta trying to hold him close here. And he's got 11 steals, and any time they can run in this series, they've been going. Not going on this pitch, and Davis will take it, and it is down low, ball one. Fastball missing, and there he had his pitch count up to 97 now. Hasn't extended his lead at first base. Ground ball right back to the mound. Good stab. Arietta will make the underhand flip. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on. Bottom of the sixth inning. The Orioles need to come back to win this series. Down by three.
MCA. I understand everything that goes on with you know with the kids and you know a big thing that's different from nowadays is nothing is for the kids everything's always about the quick buck every there's always a membership nowadays to pay to to go to these places and that right there stinks because I mean most inner city kids can't afford that and I was one of the inner city kids who couldn't afford it but I mean back in the early to mid 90s it's a lot different RBI program, Adam Jones, are covering the bases, Orioles in the community, speaks from experience and helps those kids in situations like he was in. Barry Patterson's got a perfect drag butt base hit. Yeah, you really almost have to encourage him to hit the ball by you by playing in so close. Kind of what Pete Rose did in that World Series against Mickey Rivers. Just say, I, no way I can bunt because once he gets it by the pitcher, there's no chance of getting them. A great drag bunt. We say we see so few drag bunts anymore by the lefties who bring it with them down the line. Well, he was practicing that today, as he does every day. And I was thinking of, in fact, talking to Rick Dempsey and Gary Allison. I said if Robbie Alomar was here, they'd come out like he did. Robbie's come out every 10 minutes before everybody hit. Work on button the other way too. Just think how much of an impact that would have. So there you go, Corey with a double. Scored the only run to this point. Orioles trying to get back in this game as they have in their last five wins come from behind. Tejada is due. He's had an 0 for 2. He's grounded out twice. Couple of hits and 12 at bats in the series. And the breaking ball from Cahill will miss down low. So the Orioles get the leadoff man on. Patterson the leadoff double in the first inning scored on the Marquegas sack fly. And this is only the second time the Orioles have had the leadoff man on base in the ball game. But you did notice a lot of offers there, other than Mark Akis and Corey Patterson. So somebody else is going to have to get some hits. 2-0 delivery to Tejada, grounded foul outside of third base. Orioles in the series coming into the ball game, they've had 10 leadoff batters on in 17 innings in the first two ball games. Cahill. He's done much better than that. So Juan Samuel's ball club much more difficult against Cahill to get the innings where you ought to score some runs when you get those leadoff people on. Two ball, one strike count. Short lead at first base. Well, you're hoping with a three-run lead, he's going to worry a lot about Patterson. I always figure when you get guys that can steal bases like Corey, you want to make them stop. But you, with the three run lead, you want to worry about the guys at the plate. So hopefully, maybe he at 22 will have more focus on Patterson, who won't stay where he is very long. That one is a jam shot to left. And an easy play for Gross to out his retired 0 for 3. Our GMC game flow has been about that man, Trevor Cahill. Looking to pick up his eighth win of the season against only two losses. He has just held the Oriole bats down. He faces Marquegas now who picked up the lone RBI on that sack fly. He's also single. Marquegas is now five for ten lifetime off the 22-year-old right-hander. Gale giving an eye on Patterson at first base. Marquegas will take it up high for a ball. By month for Nick Marquegas. 312 in June, July, a big month for him, as is August. So the hot weather months have favored Nick Marquegas with a strong average. Nick coming into the ball game of this season. He's hung around that 300 mark virtually all year. Yeah, all his numbers are up. I mean, he's hit lefties well on base percentage, uh, really high, close to 400. Probably right up there tonight, getting on base. Patterson goes, and there's no chance. Stolen base. Yeah, he gets on. He just, it's going to happen. You, you, you let the, the wrong guy on base. It's like the old Oakland Aim Club when Campanaris would get on. Billy North, you know, 50, 70 steals. They just, they just have too good a speed to get rid of it quickly. Your catcher makes a good throw. Doesn't matter. Too good a jump. 13 out of 15 for Corey Patterson now. Suzuki throws him out 30% of the time, but he had no chance. And Marquegas will take the pitch up high. Count goes to 3 and 1. With first base open here and one down. And Ty Wigginton waiting on deck. 
Cahill might choose. He doesn't want to put a base runner on, but he certainly doesn't want to give in to Marquecas. 3 1 delivery to him. Just delivered a good pitch, 3 and 2. Right, just uh, figured, yeah, I'll do what I do best uh, throw a fastball with pretty good velocity and good movement. And a lot of opportunities, as you can see, for the Orioles when they get in scoring position, but this is one of them. And then Nick came in at 317, so good situation for the O's. 3 2, one away. And Marquegas gets jammed, and Cahill just rears back and gets the K he needed. He's got four in the game. Well, you know, he throws enough balls away that when he does come in, they don't do this very often to Nick, especially three and two, doesn't quite get to it. I mean, good swing. I'm not sure he threw it by him, but he located it so well, tough to get the bat head to it. So Ty Wigginton will try for the two out RBI. Wigginton, 234 on the year with runners in scoring position. And he was robbed of a hit by Gross in the fourth inning, his last at bat. Suzuki goes out to grab that one. Wiggins and now 0 for 4 in the times he has faced Cahill. Orioles batting in the sixth inning down by three, so a big run out there to just, even if they only get one in the inning, cut that lead down. And also make Cahill throw a little more. Here's the 1 0 delivery to him. And that's going to miss down low. It goes to 2 0. Now remember, the home runs have been hit predominantly by right handed hitters. And after last year, it was the lefties that did the damage. So here's your home run count six home runs by the right handers, two by the lefties. 2 0 delivery. Wigginson reaching for that one, fouls it off. Gary, he's just so awfully good tonight. 2 0, you're looking fastball, and he throws you a breaking ball at 22 years old. He pitches, doesn't he? Yeah, he really does, and he's got great stuff. And Terry Crowley, the Royal hitting instructor, said they're rated from 0 to 8, and he's 5 plus in all four pitches. And Strasburg might be 8, but he's, he's up there. Well, he has all the numbers. I mean, Leadoff batters in an inning, inning 187 against him. Nobody gets on leading off an inning. Runners in scoring position 205. Yeah, that was only the, the second stolen base all year against him. And Corey Patterson, so he controls the running game. And when he finishes up, what should he'll ready to, to, to field the ball? Foul tipped. And Suzuki could not hang on that one just. Off the end of his glove and a three ball, two strike count. If you're going to throw a lot of ground balls, you better be ready to field the ball, and he is. I don't see a lot of young pitchers in that ready position once they release it. He's beaten Baltimore once this year, going six innings, running two hits. He has a two and one lifetime mark against the Orioles with a 2 8 4 ERA in those three career starts. Wigginton down to third base. Guzman off a little trouble, but has time to recover. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Six complete here at Camden Yards, four to one A's.
reported all game. Felix PA expected to be activated Monday in Detroit. He'll spend the weekend playing in Bowie as Juan Samuel wanted to see him get a few more starts in left field and a couple more at-bats to test that shoulder. But Felix was in the clubhouse today and told reporters that he is feeling no pain in his shoulder. He's very excited to come back. In fact, he told Juan Samuel in the weight room today, he said, hey, I, I have about two hits in me for you tonight. And Juan said, that's great. Pack up your bags, go down to Bowie and get them down in Bowie. So Felix very eager to come back and help the team, but Juan Samuel wants to make sure that he doesn't rush him because once Felix gets up here, he will be playing almost every day. Gary? No question ever that the decision made that he'll be in the starting lineup and be in the leadoff spot. Juan Samuel wants him in there and hopes for a little better D out in left field with it as well. 4-7-0 for the A's. Uh, the Orioles have won three and two, and Frank Mott is on. Arietta's out of the game. Yeah, not a lot of work in this home stands, uh, but uh, scoreless uh, against the Nationals over the weekend. Good stuff when he doesn't fall over to his left, which he did on that pitch. That's when the command goes. We're going to see nice readings on the radar gun, but the wind-up still a work in progress. The journeyman uh, right-hander, they got out of the Minnesota organization last year. 1-0 delivery, Rosales, that went off the other end of the bat. A foul ball right off the nub as that one rode in on him. This is his first at bat. He came on as a pinch runner for Barton, hitting 259, five homers on the 23 RBIs, as you see. We are in the seventh inning, a one ball, one strike count. Orioles need a comeback win again, and again it would have to be in a game where they were down by three runs or more. Wigginton coming over and uh, no room. And a one ball, two strike count on him. Stop by High Tops Backstage Grill on York Road in Timonium next Wednesday night. Orioles alumni viewing party, former O's outfielder Joe Orsalike will be there. He'll be meeting fans at High Tops from 6 to 8. O's will be playing the Tigers on Mass and HD starting at 7. For details, go to OriolesReach.com. Orioles. Let me get a one, two, three inning out of out of here and get the offense back up. He had to reach and fouls that one away. Arietta went six, gave up four runs, three earned, seven hits. He walked four, tying his high for the year, and struck out two. And Jake Arietta, the pitcher of record for the Orioles, their starter out of the ball game. One ball, two strike count. And that's up the middle and a base hit. Well, Rosales in his first at bat gets a leadoff single here in the seventh. I'll take a look. We talked about Trevor Cahill fielding his position. Look where Frank is. He's turned around looking over in the dugout and, you know, a ground ball. I mean, that's what you do when you throw and execute your pitchers. You get him to hit the ball on the ground for him because he's got a running fastball and a hard slider. Unprepared to field his position. Right through the wickets. Hit sharply, though. Kuzman off up. Runner on the first base and nobody out. Eight hits on the board now for the A's in the game. And that will be a strike taken. Orioles just cannot afford to fall any further behind. Kuzman off. Still looking for that first hit. 0 for his last 20. He has an 0 for 3 in this ball game. Did reach on an error. Well, He's gone 0 for yeah. 12 in the series. That slump hasn't hurt his feeling, has it? No. Oh, what a marvelous uh, series. Inside, Jack knifed it hitting. So, not what Frank might have wanted to do as the first two are on here in the seventh inning. He just flies open. I mean, he is the perfect illustration of the merry-go-round versus the Ferris wheel. You spin off versus actually going like a Ferris wheel towards home plate. And that's why the ball runs so erratically and pulled off the plate. But to remember, the, in the six games, the last six games, the Oriole bullpen has given up two runs. And that's why they've been able to come back and come from behind in their last five wins. Then with a .77 ERA over those six ball games, but two on here and nobody out. Suzuki infield double play depth and the pitch is a strike on the outside corner. Suzuki is grounded out, walked and hit into a fielder's choice. Came up in the fifth inning, 
with a couple on base and he hit into the fielder's choice. He's had a couple of hits and 10 at bats in this series against the Orioles on the year. Six for 32 with four RBIs against those pitching. Here's the 0 1 delivery to him and a wild swing and a pitch outside 0 2. Well, take a look. Yeah, this is what you're looking at. And again, just a you know, good slider right there. And Kurt Suzuki does not usually chase that. Gives you an idea that when Frank Mata's stuff is around the plate and down, it, it's it's major league uh, caliber and then some. 0 oh, 2 count on Suzuki. Runners off first and second base. Fouled away. Juan Samuel saying of Mata, the, the really. He likes him even though there's so much room to improve because he challenges hitters and he says that wildness sometimes with the hitters he's talked to a face mod to say you don't want to get comfortable in there. He's not an easy guy to hit against because you just never know where that wildness may lead like into your rib cage. So you don't get real a real solid stance against him. Here's the 0 2 delivery swung on and missed. And Mata gets the strikeout. Well, there's the good breaking ball. Goes straight down. 0 oh, 2, you're ahead. You can get on top of your slider. Good tilt. And there's your HH Greg X. Well, I mean, you can see the bat headed well out in front of that good breaking ball down in the way. So, one away, still runners on at first and second base. Brian Sweeney. Sweeney three for three in the ball game, and the pitch is inside. He's had three singles, a run scored, and an RBI, making the start in right field. So a very effective ball game for him, and again against the Orioles, another good night. Twelve hits in 31 at bats on the year, with seven RBIs against the Orioles. 1-0 delivery. Sweeney will take it. That's there. Saw a project I wanted uh, uh, to mention. I've uh, personally just have always had great respect and admiration for the Negro League players and the work that's been done in Kansas City with the Hall of Fame there. And they have got a they got a project going called the Negro League's Grave Marker Projects. They put their 19th marker down yesterday in Kansas City. The former Negro League player fouled off. It's a voluntary effort. That's made by people who are interested. It costs 700 bucks for headstones. The Society for American Baseball Research made some donations, and others who found out about it, Jerry Reinsdorf, the White Sox owners, is making donations. Faye Vincent, the former commissioner, and Don Zimmer, former player who knew a lot of those Negro League players, making donations. And uh, if you're interested in something like that, it's called the Negro League's Grave Marker Project. They are searching for a number of the Negro League players. They don't even know where they're buried. So they're searching for the burial sites and then getting the markers made up and placed wherever that may be. Great project. One ball, two strike count. And Sweeney will chop that foul off his leg. Count stays at one and two. I had a chance uh, once uh, to uh, speak at the, the luncheon for the museum when I was in Kansas City. You know, it's such a great, because I have great history because we clinched our first uh, pennant there in 1966 and then you know you had a chance every time you go there to see Buck O'Neill when he was alive and then the great ball clubs that you had to play against and compete against and then as you mentioned Charlie Finley the owner yep yeah the donkey and the mule down the left field sheep up in the right field corner one two delivery on the way and that'll be foul back I once met a lady jazz singer at a very old jazz club in Detroit one night. She had to be 80 something. And uh, there were only about a half dozen of us in the lounge. And she came over and sat down and started talking baseball and found out she was talking about her father had some involvement in the Negro Leagues. And I said, Well, you know, tell me about that. Ground ball up the middle. That is going to be a base hit. That's going to score one. Throw coming to third base off the mark. Boy, they had a chance. Kuzman off. 
took the chance, and Adam Jones did not get the throw there. So Sweeney's four for four, two RBIs, and it's a 5-1 game. Yeah, that, I mean, that's the, the, the fifth run, but they give you an out. I don't know what Kuzminoff is going to do, but just come up, throw it, going to hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, and then make a bad throw. I mean, he is so out. And then you're one out closer to getting out of this inning. Mm. And that really opens the door. A 5-1 lead. Still only one away and runners on at first and third. And that will bring up Cust. Second inning. Yeah, he got a 2-0 fastball and ripped it into right center field. And there's a disciplined hitter. Worked the count into his favor. Pennington would hit one over Patterson's head and they would be off to a three-run inning. Our Ford drive of the game, your local Ford dealer invites you to experience Ford like never before. Ford, drive one. Guzman off at third base, Sweeney on at first. Cust is also struck out. And uh, grounded into a double play. Here's the 1-0 delivery to him. Anyway, regarding uh, in Detroit, Buck O'Neill happened to be there. The lady sat down, talked to me. The end, she said, I got all this stuff in a box I found. I don't know what it is. The stuff says it has something to do with the Birmingham Barons. And it's ticket stubs and it's names and numbers and it's records and it's old checks that were cashed by players, I guess. She really didn't know. I said, my God, it sounds like you've got the history of the Birmingham Barons and your, your grandfather must have been involved as an accountant or something for the ball club. She said, yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> and Buck O'Neill was in Detroit and I saw him the next day and I said, you got to contact this woman. He did. Jones back and cannot get it. And it will be a ground rule double. So Cust will pick up another RBI. Kuzminoff will score. Sweeney will go to third. And the A's here in the seventh inning building their lead at 6-1. to one. Well, atrocious defense early in the game. Doesn't get a good jump. I'm telling you, if you're not going to work on your craft, you're not going to make plays. And it's not an easy play, but you want to help your pitching staff out. You want to win games. you got to make the plays early in the game. you got to make that play. you got to make the throws. I'm telling you, I don't care how, I mean, you know, he's a, he's a gifted young player that is on cruise control. And all you got to do is watch this month in the outfield. I mean, atrocious defense. And it doesn't show up anywhere in the... Uh, Boy, it story. does. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, it does show up. You don't know what happened unless you're there watching it and seeing it. It doesn't show up as errors. You don't have plays not made to get recorded. But well, I come, you know, when I'm doing the games, I played with Paul Blair. I played with Al Bumbry, who came out of the military and was rushed to the big leagues. What a real good outfielder. He worked on it every day and became a. He didn't have the physical gifts that Adam Jones has. And the only thing I'm saying is because I like Adam. What I like Adam is even more if he starts being the best player he can be. And the only way you can do that, at least my past experience from watching players, not only on the Orioles, but throughout the big leagues, is to go out there, take balls off the bat. And if you're going to win a gold glove, just like you put on that uniform, I mean, it's symbol. It's symbolic of the fact that you're supposed to be good at your craft. In the infield drawn in, that is a base hit into center field by Ellis. That will score another run as Sweeney comes across the plate. And Mata getting nobody out here as Ellis gets his first hit in RBI. And it is a 7-1 to lead. And you make some plays, you're not playing in. And, of course, now, you know, you got to play in. you got to try to cut off the run because the runners are in scoring position at third base with less than two outs. So all of a sudden you go from being in the game to being out of the game. And now you got to make yourself a pitching change if Juan Sam Well comes up. So not a good inning for Frank Matas. He comes on and retires only one batter. There have been three runs scored, and he's responsible for the runners.
Local Ford dealer invites you to experience Ford like never before. Ford, drive one. And by H.H. Gregg, we make buying TVs and appliances simple. H.H. Gregg, price and advice guaranteed. So the A's having a big seventh inning as Prime Mata works only a third of an inning, four hits, a strikeout, and a hit batter. And uh, already three runs in and a couple on base. Matt Albers on. Yeah, second straight night came in last night uh, with a seven to six lead. Got a big double play ball. So, you know, again, you know, had a walk, but then got the ground ball, which is what he does so well when he's on his game. First and third, one out, and Gabe Gross has scored a run. He's 0 for 3 in the ball game. He reached on a fielder's choice when he crossed in the second inning. Albers working for the fifth time this year against the A's. One down, gets the ground ball foul. Four and a third innings against the A's on the season. No runs on two hits. He hasn't walked anybody on the A's team and has struck out three. Albers got a big ground ball coming in the ball game last night when the Orioles needed a double play. And here he is in the same situation. Three runs in the second inning, an honor and run in the fifth. And uh, three more added here in the seventh for the A's. He'll take the pitch down low and Gross with a one ball, one strike count. All of this to benefit Trevor Cahill, who has given up just the one run on three hits, or he's got a run in the first inning. Since then, they've had two singles. He's walked only one and struck out four. The 1 1 delivery to Gross. And that's a call strike. One ball, two strike count. Orioles here at home on the year 16 and 24. Concluding this home stand, they will either be on the stand 6 and 3 or 5 and 4, depending on the outcome of this one. 1 2 runner going and fouled away. Yeah, the, all the things you can do if you're Bob Guerin and you run a team, you can try to stay out of the double play even though it's a pitcher's count. Of course, Albert's not that he can't strike you out, but just trying to add runs, make it easier for his pitcher, easier for his bullpen if he has to go there, easier for his defense. They're not used to getting all these runs. Six round last night, even though they lost, and seven here in this ball game so far. One and two. Will miss inside. So a two ball, two strike count on Gross. Pennington waiting on deck. The A's average 4.1 runs per ball game on the year. That is 12th out of the 14 teams in the American League. The Orioles are 13th, averaging three and a half runs a game. Yeah, a little better at home, which is why their record is you know, it's not outstanding at home, but coming in, what, at 16 and 24. And because of this homestand, that average has almost gone up to four runs a game, 3.95. On the road, a little different story. They're averaging 3.1 runs a game. And that's why they struggle. Albers, close but not quite. And the count will go to three balls and two strikes, first and third, and one down. They really do great when we talk about the A's hitters. They've done a nice job of fouling pitches off and working the count and you know, occasional wild swing, but really under control. See whether or not Ellis goes at first again. 3 2, he's running. And a base hit into left field by Gross. That will deliver an RBI as Cust will cross the plate. Ellis will stop at second base. And a four run seventh inning and an eight to one lead. And once again, another hitter just shortening the swing, working the count to where you have to throw a strike because it's gone full at three and two. Now, what's this stroke? I mean, that, look at that pitch. It's a ball. Maybe, you know, maybe it doesn't sink. It runs a little bit, but then the approach just slicing it into left field. They've done that a couple of times with the runner going as Torres going over to cover the bag, which open makes that hole even bigger. I mean, that's a base hit anyway. Yeah. But it's hit right where the well hitting is about that. Yeah, it's about balance and plate coverage, and you saw it right there. I mean, what a horrible pitch. 
He got to throw a strike. He worked the count back by fouling pitches off. You know, Matt Alder's trying to get him out with breaking balls. Missed. And then you bring up another one of their hottest hitters. But look at that. Double single, couple of RBIs. Eight hitter in the inning for the A's. The two RBI double came in the second inning. He's now had four hits in ten at bats in the series. With the hits tonight, he's extended his hit streak to four games for Cliff Pennington. Runners at first and second, still only one away. And the pitch is going to miss outside for a ball. So the A's putting up some numbers, big innings. Six run fourth inning last night. So far, a four run seventh inning in this game. Two and one. Albert's pitch is rocked down the line, but it's foul. The A's have against the Orioles coming into this game. They were hitting 272 against the Orioles, well above their overall average on the season. Here in the season series now, they've outscored the Orioles 49 to 39. And the ERA of the Orioles is about 1.2 runs higher than the ERA of the A's. 2 2 delivery on the way. And missed inside, and another 3 2 count. Ellis, the lead runner at second, the responsibility of Frank Mata. Gross belongs to Albers. 3 2 delivery. And that's going to be a base hit into right field. Runner will be held at third. Marquegas will get it in. And the bases are loaded with one away. Yeah, everything seems to filter right back to the middle of the plate. You know, Matt always struggles against lefties, at least this year. They're hitting you know, well over 320. So even then, you know, again, just trying to get them in, out, in, and breaking balls, and again, the count goes to three and two, and then another quality swing. They're really piling them up now. That's eight runs on 13 hits, and the ninth batter here in the seventh inning, Raja Davis, who has had an 0 for 4 in the ball game. Well, it's, it's an understatement to say that they easily could have been out of this inning. You know, Jones could have thrown out Kuzman, Kuzman off at third, and then didn't get a very good route on the ball over his head. But it all counts, and they're going to pile them on until you either make a good pitch or you do something defensively to get your pitcher out of the out of the game. Sweeney has had his first four hit ball game. Pennington has got three hits in the game. It's his fourth three hit game. Raja Davis on a big wild cut and an 0-2 count. He has grounded out three times and popped out once. Infield playing a double play depth a little closer at first and third. Two down for Davis, who's had one hit in his last 26 times to the plate. 0 2 delivery, and he's gone. Boy, that is a hitter struggling right there. Yeah, Matt made a terrific pitch. Good slider down and away. You've got a guy that's not swinging well. When that happens, they don't usually see the ball out of your hand, and then you just the perfect pitch, slider down and away. Pitch he worked on, kind of discovered this spring, hopefully to make him more effective against right handed batters. Now the infield can back up a bit with two down. Here is Adam Rosales, who started this inning with a single. He's got the bases loaded, and he will foul that one away. The Orioles had the lead in the ball game in the first inning, one nothing, and they quickly disappeared in the second, three to one. And since then, the A's have built on that lead to make it an eight-one ball game, and really looking to take the doors off this if Rosales can deliver a two-out base hit. Ellis, Gross, and Pennington on bounces. And right up in the air, and the runner will stay. That ball just went right straight down and came right up at the side of Weeders. Yeah, Saker that's going to, you know, 60 feet, 6 inches to the plate, out in front of the plate. There it is, straight up in the air. Matt's looking for it, finds it, and then the backspin. Ugly inning. A lot of things going on. Even last night, all the base running. 
And he calls. And one one delivery on the way. Rosales will pop that one up. Shortstop or third. This Torres coming over. He wants it. And he will put it away. But a big four run seventh inning. Seventh inning stretch time brought to you by Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey. Please drink responsibly. Strikeouts. Orioles will have Jones, Weeders, and Bell. Adam Jones has had an 0 for 2. He has grounded out and struck out. Orioles with just the three hits. Patterson, two, and the single by Marquecas. And with only one walk, that has left the Orioles with only three base runners left on, and only one of those in scoring position. Adam Jones will take it for a strike as we go to the bottom half of the seventh inning. Fenway Park tomorrow night for a game one against the Red Sox. Hope you'll join us. Chopper right back to the mound. Good glove work right there. And Jones retired. Time to text in your vote for the AT&T player of the game. Here are the candidates on the night. Sweeney with a big four hit ball game. Corey Patterson with the double single run scored and a stolen base. Trevor Cahill has got a chance to win number eight on the year. Has just been very effective in dominating. Text in your vote A, B, or C, 51862. Matt Wieters has flied out and grounded up. A's batters now working on their fifth at bat. The Orioles on their third. And the pitch is taken down low and one ball, one strike count. Yeah, Trevor uh, Cahill, you know, we told you he's 22 last year, uh, you know, 32 starts, and then a stress fracture in the left shoulder, not the throwing arm. So that backed him up. He was uh, actually started the season uh, doing rehab down at AAA Sacramento. So his first start in the big leagues this year was April 30th. It's a lot of wins. That's why he does not qualify with the number of innings pitched. Has not lost in his last eight games. Won his last six decisions. Weeders takes it away in a two ball, two strike count. Well, for a big guy, I mean, very athletic. 6'4, you know, they list him at 222, so he's somewhere in that range. He's gone over that 75 pitch mark, as we told you earlier. This is when the average has really jumped up when he gets by 75 pitches. He goes up to about 333. Before that, it's 145, 205, and 197. Ground ball down to third this time. Rosales is there to play it, and there are two down. This summer, your kids can learn how to play like the pros from the pros. It's the official Orioles summer baseball camp, ages 7 to 16, five days of training. Current former O's, free membership to the Junior Orioles Dugout Club, chance to play at Oriole Park. Register for the July 19th through 22 summer camp at Memorial Park in York. 
PA. For additional dates and locations, 410-472-3500 or Orioles.com. Two down. Here's Bell. Major League debut. He has grounded out a couple of times at the plate. Made a couple of good glove plays at third. Has committed a throwing error. All in his first Major League game. 1 0 pitch to him, and that will miss. 2 0 from Cahill. The bell will be sticking around here to start the road trip in Boston. Selected fourth round by the Dodgers in 05. And he gets his Major League first base hit. A single here in the seventh inning. And a crisp single. Kind of runs down the middle of the play and he just smacks it in the left. This inside's out stroke. Well under control for a young hitter. And a moment to be remembered. Ball is collected in the dugout for him. Little Josh Bell. There's hit number one at the major league level. Kevin Millwood has the baseball. Orioles have their fourth hit. And it will get more to the plate. He has walked and grounded out. Scott getting the start at second base, 12th time he started at second. And he'll take that to center. Raja Davis in place. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Seven innings complete. There's a baseball that goes on the mantle. Hit number one for Josh Bell. there went on obviously to take care of any concerns as he took over for Mark Belanger the eight time gold glove winner Cal and Eddie working there yeah well Cal I mean what one year three three errors for the entire season Sometimes yeah Earl knew Earl, tall. Earl knew <laughs> If he went to shortstop, he could have a little more power over third base because he, he knew he was going to have a powerful shortstop. And it really changed the mold of what it was kind of acceptable. I mean, Ronnie Hansen, of course, was rookie of the year in 60. He was a tall shortstop, but he didn't hit the kind of home runs that Cal did. So, you know, Earl, he, he was a very good judge of talent. The one thing you can say about him, he talked about that over the reunion weekend, and he said just felt that he could play shortstop with his agility, soccer player, basketball player. Got it done. Yeah, did he ever? And then some. 2 0 delivery. Matt Albers up and they're working here. Frank Mata ended up in a third of an inning, charged with four runs on four hits, a hit batter and a strikeout. Kevin Kuzman off at the plate, and he will take the pitch for a strike. He's been hit by a pitch and scored, reached on an error, hit into a double play. 
And it's flied up. Officially 0 for 3 and 0 for his last 20. Gary Blevins in the pen. 3 1 delivery. Guzmanov takes it outside and Elvers watches it. So a leadoff walk here in the eighth inning by Matt Elvers. Eight runs, 13 hits, no errors for the A's. One run, four hits, and two errors for the Orioles. And the score may be eight to one, but that will drive Juan Samuel crazy. A leadoff walk in the eighth. Well, among many, I mean, uh, they have done a great job of getting on early on. Let's see, third, fourth, fifth, seventh, and eighth. And we showed you the number. Orioles only score when the first guy gets on, what, 40% of the time? But the league average is 47. Yeah. And it drops down in the 15 percentile range if you get the first batter out. 0 oh, 1 count, Kurt Suzuki. And that will be fouled away. And a two strike count. Suzuki has reached via the walk, but is 0 for 3 in the game. His average now in 259. This has been a sloppy ball game for the Orioles again. Well, only two errors up there, but been a lot of misplays that have led to a lot of runs. Suzuki will take that. It is down low and a one ball, two strike count. Kurt Suzuki with Sweeney winning on deck. And the 1 2 by Albers. And the ground ball towards third. Bell up for this one. Second one. Relay over to first. And a good double play. <laughs> and again, Moore gets dumped. This time, an easy fall if there is such a thing. That's the third time in making a pivot he's gone down at second. Yeah, he's used to playing the corner position, third or even first. And again, you know, he gets out of there. I mean, he's got plenty of time here. And I think uh, Ty Wiggington, who received that final out, he's going to have to have a little conversation with him. <laughs> he's got to get out of the way. Well, it appears that uh, Cahill's night may be over. Yep. They've had the bullpen active. So there are two down. And maybe not, though. You never know. They're certainly it's capable silly. of pitching more. Strike on the outside corner. Sweeney, a four for four ball game as he's delivered four singles, two RBIs, and he has scored two runs in the ball game. Big night for Sweeney. And he'll take that one to left field down the line. Patterson. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. Bottom of the eighth coming at Camden Yards with the A's on top. Action Fenway, the site. Brad Bergerson will take them out against Tim Wakefield. 
Our coverage on Masson will begin at 6.30 with those extra presented by your local Ford dealer, followed by game coverage at 7 on Masson HD. All the access you need right here on Masson. Well, there they are, Brad Bergeson, uh, you know, trying to get it back into sync. And by that I mean SYNC, but also get the sinker going, and you can see Wakefield. Uh, he has struggled at least with one loss record, so, but always good numbers against the Orioles. Juan Samuel talking about the plays at second base. Samuel could make those plays as well as anybody, and he's helping more. Learn how to avoid those runners, get rid of the ball, how to take that pivot. Yeah, he wants him to stay healthy. Yeah. Blevins is on to do the pitching, the left-hander. So Cahill out of there, a run on four hits over seven against Cahill, a walk and four strikeouts. Yeah, we saw him on uh, Tuesday night. Uh, no runs in 12, the last 15 outings, two-thirds of an inning on Tuesday. As Turris leading it off for the Orioles in the bottom half of the eighth inning. As Turris will pop it up first base side. Goes Salas and the tarp and no catch. Just couldn't get over there and get set even though the ball landed on the tarp. It was reachable but that's tough play. Well, it's a tough smile with an 8-1 yeah. lead. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you play everywhere. We saw him early in the year at the out in the outfield, not an easy play because again, it's right about knee high. You know, if you look at the stands, that's about waist high, so you can get right to the to the stands and not fall over. 0-2 delivery that'll be in the air to left field. Hit pretty good. Gross going back. He's got room. One away in the eighth. Time's running out for your chance to vote for your favorite O's for the 2010 All-Star Game at Orioles.com. You can vote, and uh, this is the last day. Vote there, and you may win the Orioles VIP Experience All-Star Sweepstakes. One lucky winner, four tickets, upcoming game, VIP parking, on-field access for VP, meet and greet the All-Stars, and a personalized All-Star Game batting practice jersey. Voting ends today. Visit Orioles.com slash All-Star for details. But hurry. You got about uh, two and a half hours. That's it. That's it. Hmm. And the votes will be tabulated, counted by the accounting firm of Edis and Redis. Popped up and no play. Is that it? Come over the screen. Corey Patterson, two hits, double single, stolen base, and the lone run scored. Look at that batting, batting, yeah, look at that batting average. Hmm. He wants to play. Well, offensively, done a very nice job scoring runs, stealing bases. He said, I can certainly understand. In fact, I, just, I was sitting at home when the Orioles called me and said, well, Do I want to play? Because he, a big breaking ball there. Because mm -hmm. you can see Blevins at just about 6'6. Six, six. Mm -hmm. And then makes a perfect breaking ball, swooping breaking ball down and away. It's Suzuki. Two down. Here's Tejada's had an 0 for 3, DHing. 2 for 13 in the series for Tejada. And Tejada will foul it away. Luke Scott hit a home run last night, rounding first, pulled hamstring. I said to Gary Allison, I've never seen that before. Gary Allison said, I have because I did it. Fenway Park, I hit one off the wall. With the bases loaded, I got the first base, pulled the hamstring. I had to pull up at first base and stop. I got a three RBI base hit off the wall of Fenway and had a hamstring problem. My line that night, three at bats, no runs, one hit, and five RBIs for Allenson. <laughs> he said, well, I guess it has happened before. And an 0-2 count. Gary Allenson, third best coach, third base coach here for the O's and the former Red Sox player. He took me deep. Adam Jones went out of his way to make sure that I got the box score. So you saw it. And yeah, and I also called weather.com and the wind was blowing out that evening. <laughs> <laughs> it's gale force winds, actually. Gale force. is hurricane. Blowing to left. There's a little pop up to short that ended exactly. up in the monster seats. Then the screen. 0 oh, 2, and that's up high. One ball, two strike count from Blevins. And that's the great thing about Fenway. You know, when you're pitching, now you know you're broadcasting. You don't care how the wind blows, but you'd run up that those ramps. Or in the morning, 
you know, now you can just kind of get it all on your cell phone and all that, but you run up the ramps. And as you got to the top, you're hoping that, you know, at least it's blowing across. Bonus, of course, if it's blown in. And that's going to be to the gap and a base hit. Gross will come over. Dahada picks up the two out single here in the eighth. There's his first hit of the ball game. Yeah, Fenway, I mean, Camden Yards is a very small, I mean, intimate ballpark. Fenway, if you cross the photo and you're on the mound, it could be frightening. Just like everything's on top of you, it's got to, doesn't it? It really does. And I mean, that's why it's such a special ballpark. I mean, all the tradition, what, 1912, and, but again, the, uh, the intimacy of everybody just hovering around you. Well, the best thing was they built a new runway from the visiting clubhouse to the dugout. Otherwise, Thousands of people have died just by breathing, frankly. Well, yeah, that. I always thought it was kind of as part of the charm. You know, they had a spring kind of coming up underneath that, and it was bubbling spring, and wet. And intoxicating liquids <laughs> that for the past hundred years have been spilled, splattered, and it was wood. That well, was, it was a wooden yeah. walkway, so the wood was just saturated with whatever disinfectants had been thrown down there for a hundred years. Well, that really brings back fond memories. Because <laughs> the same in, no, I mean, the, 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 they had a wooden, uh, the, the runway in Cleveland was wood. So every time you'd have an argument with Weaver, you could just hear him. If you had to leave the game and you didn't want to leave the game or whatever, you could hear him coming because he would be clump, clump. Yep, coming up to whether it was Boston or whether it was Cleveland. Two ball, one strike count here. Runner on at first, not holding. Arkegas will pop it up. Shallow left center. Shortstop Pennington wants it. Called off. Gross gets it. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base as the pitching of the A's continues to overwhelm the Orioles. An 8-1 to one lead. Thorne, Jim Palmer, Amber Theo Harris here at Camden Yards. It has not been a pretty night for the Orioles. It is eight to one. The A's on top. Matt Alberson inning in two thirds. No runs, two hits, a walk, and a strikeout. Koji Uehara on the pitch. Yeah, came in the other night and uh, you know one inning, couple of hits, a run. You know, trying to get himself back into shape, getting the feel of throwing American League baseball. Uehara against the. A's here in the top half of the ninth inning. We have uh, Costellis and Gross are due up. Big night for the offense of uh, an, a team not noted for their offense. They've gotten it done tonight with eight runs on 13 hits. Costa, part of that, two RBIs. He's had two doubles and two runs scored as well. He's two for four in the ballgame. Costa, DH. Bahar's delivery to him, and that will be taken for a strike.
Costa on the inside corner with it. Cincinnati got a victory over the Cubs again in another day game. Boy, the Reds are in a heck of a battle with the Cardinals. They started the day a half game ahead, so they're at the moment at least a game ahead in the Central. Teams on July 1 that are in a postseason position either lead the division or the wild card on July 1. 60% of the time they will make it to the postseason. Those teams that have those positions on July 1. Check swing is a called strike. So while it's certainly not a given, in the 15 seasons where we've had the three division play, 60% of the teams who have playoff spots in this state, they're the teams that make it three times. American League history, they've all gotten there. Strikeout recorded. No higher getting it. Yeah, split fingered fastball. And velocity on a couple of pitches the other night was pretty crisp. And here's the splitter. You get ahead, it tumbles just enough. And for the second half of the year, or for the last three months, July, August, and September, it'd be nice to get Koji back throwing the ball like he did when he started last year before the elbow problems, the flexor tendons. Had an injury there. And he was 89, 91. Nice sharp slider with a splitter. Ellis has singled in a run. He has walked twice and he has struck out. And the no two count on him. Last year in the American League, the teams that on July 1 were in a playoff position, the only team that didn't make it was the Tigers. And they had that playoff tiebreaker against the Twins that they lost. Otherwise, the teams that had been there went. National League last year, the Brewers led on July 1. The Giants led the wild card. Neither of them ended up in the playoffs. Foul back into the screen. But you want to be the team being chased and not the one doing the chasing. It makes things a whole lot easier as far as postseason opportunities are concerned. So that would be the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Twins, and the Rangers. Yes. Those numbers. 1 2 down the line. And I think there's a pretty good chance that's going to stay that way. I think Texas has got a shot, a good shot to win the American League West. Boy, I saw a number, though. Uh, I, they had a uh, their ninth starting pitcher of the year. Only used 10 all last year. I think Omar Beltry, a young kid that uh, pitched four innings last night. So, still trying to get all the answers, but such a much better bullpen this year. And a healthy Josh Hamilton. And I forgot Hamilton. He went from 130 RBIs to like 56 because of injuries. And they won eight more games. So now he's back. He's got the hitting streak. He's healthy. Nelson Cruz has been in and out of the lineup. But again, I mean, and still looking for a catcher. Yeah. There. One, two, delivery on the way. And the ground ball towards short is Torres. One of the problems for the Rangers is the bankruptcy proceedings that are undertaken in trying to get the sale done to the group that Nolan Ryan is involved in. He's not the leader of the group. They're in bankruptcy proceedings, and they're not going to be able to make many, if any, moves player-wise until the bankruptcy proceedings done. And the bankruptcy judge last week sent it back to a mediator to be ruled on. The creditors of the team trying to say they have a vote in whether or not the team can be sold. The judge said, no, you don't, but you do have financial interests that have to be considered. So send it back to a mediator, and you guys work this things out. So that's where they are right now. Here's Gabe Gross, two down, nobody on. Gross, a single and an RBI. He's one for four in the ball game. Interesting, the bankruptcy proceeding record showed that since Hicks bought the club in 98, they had not had a financially successful season. Major League Baseball bailed him out to the tune of 20 million and are ready to put in 21 million more in order to cover expenses for this year. Foul back, and the count goes to one and two. Well, trying to get a one, two, three inning here in the ninth. Yeah, Dale Petrosky used to be the uh, president of the Hall of Fame, actually, uh, running their PR and things like that. He said that they only drew about 6% with TV, radio, and attendance of the potential audience down there. And that's in the left field for a base hit. Which is probably the lowest, so yeah, of, of any major league team where Milwaukee drew their radio, TV, attendance in the ballpark 44%. So, again, I guess there is room. And, of course, usually when you win, things get better. Yeah, well, that's what's kind of been surprising. The Rangers, uh, it's another situation where you got to make believers out of the fans again. But the Rangers certainly are in a position 
to make a run at it. There ought to be some real good ball games played in that West for the rest of the season. Two down. Here's Cliff Pennington. I don't know why Seattle keeps making some moves as though they're actually have a shot. They don't. They're 14 games out, and they got three teams in front of them. They can't play good enough baseball unless they have some monumental second half. Yeah, you almost think that they they're thinking that Texas is going to come back to the pack. I you know no the Angels are going to you know not be a, a team that wins 95 to 100 games like they usually do. Yeah, I guess we'll see. That's what yeah. you, that's why you play it. Yep. 0-1 delivery is going to be fouled off at the plate. This Oakland team obviously hoping to stay in the mix. They are 10 games out coming into today's play. Two strike count. Pennington. Pennington a double. Two singles. He's looking for a four hit ball game. O2 delivery to him and just miss Koji O'Hara close on that one. And a one ball, two strike count. Jake Arietta still the pitcher of record. Four runs, three earned, seven hits over six for the Orioles. That's going to be a base hit down the line. Gross is on his way to third. Marquez will get it in and hold him there. And Pennington does have a four hit ball game. And with two down, the A's have runners at the corners. So red hot, as we told you, hitting close to 440. It's going to be a splitter. It just kind of tumbles, stays up just enough. 15th base hit tonight for the A's. Sweeney with four, Pennington now with four. It'll be his second four hit game of the season for Cliff Pennington, and they've got 15 hits on the board. Roger Davis doesn't have one of them. He has taken an 0 for 5 in this game. One hit now in his last 27 at bats. Davis getting the start in center field. Coco Crisp has played so well getting the night off. 0 1 delivery. And be taken inside for a ball. Hayes has scored as many as 14 runs in a ball game this season. And they've had as many as 18 hits. Yeah, Roger Davis just seems like he can't quite trigger the bat. You know, there's got to be that separation. Have to have the hands have to go back. Foot's got to get down, kind of like a, in a golf swing or a pitching motion. Got to stay over the pitching rubber long enough to get your arm up, throw downhill. Seems he's a little bit out of sync. One, two, runners off first and third. Davis has hit only 229 at home and 298. On the road coming into the ball game, the opposite of what most of the Oakland players have done this year. One of the fastest players in Major League Baseball right now. Here's the one two delivery. Davis will take it outside, and it's two balls and two strikes from Ulahara. Connor Jackson did not play tonight. He had a hamstring problem that bothered him last year, early this year, and it's still a bit of a problem, so they rested him. He gets a regular day off each week. Their new acquisition in the outfield. Three ball, two strike count. So that will send Pennington from first. Here's the 3 2 delivery, and swung on him is. So no runs on a couple of hits. Two are left on. Bottom of the ninth inning. The Orioles trail at eight to one.
as they say, there are 27 outs that have to be recorded, and so far, we've got three left. As Yogi says. As Yogi says. Never over till it's over. Now, Michael Wirtz saw him on Tuesday. You know, last year, phenomenal. This year, shoulder problems early on. So you can see from the earned run average, uh, a little bit of a struggle. But much better recently. So, again, if, if you need to get to your closer, you're going to need your setup, guys. And, you know, last night they tried to match up. Uh, well, he didn't hit a home run off Ziegler. You know, Luke Scott hit one off of Derek Bowers. But uh, tonight, of course, K held a story. That and their offense. They, they, they really had some great at-bats tonight. They worked uh, everybody on the Orioles staff that appeared tonight. So Arietta hoping for a monumental comeback here for the Orioles, a pitcher of record for the O's, and Cahill waiting to see if he gets that win on the other side. Wigginton, 0 for 3 in the game, 1 for 11 in the series. Jones and then Weeders to follow. 14 home runs and 42 RBIs for Ty Wigginton. Certainly with the trade deadline now much to be talked about it coming at the end of July this is one player you got to believe some teams are going to be asking about right handed power is not readily available Ty Wigan takes it to center field Raja Davis well, he can play so many different positions too I mean that's such an added bonus one down updating you on our AT&T player of the game voting right now Sweeney on top. You can text in your vote to A, B, or C, 51862. The results coming up in the O's Extra post game show. Adam Jones coming up. He has grounded out twice and struck out. Orioles have had long stands in this game without getting anybody on base as the three pitchers and it's obviously Trevor Cahill really spread out any opportunity. That'll be a base hit for Jones with one out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Yeah, you gotta like Adams the hitting approach. I mean it's obviously it worked. I mean he had eight home runs, 21 RBIs. That was last month continues. He just hits the ball back up the middle. And with his power, it just allows him to wait just a little bit longer. You know, he's been laying off some really good breaking balls which didn't happen in April and early May. The Orioles have not had more than one hit in an inning. Here is Weeders, 0 for 3 in the ballgame. Weeders will take care of that. He gets a single. Jones to second. Davis will get it in. Two on and one out. Bottom of the ninth. Again, the wider stance that he's just trying to get in a better hitting position. And just kind of react to the ball instead of overswing. It's been working on this homestand. Now, Josh Bell, who got his first base hit in his last at bat, a single in his major league debut. Playing at third base, pitches taken for a ball. Bell and then more to follow. Orioles now with seven hits in the ballgame. Wurtz's delivery to him will be fouled off. One ball, one strike count. And he's got a change up also to ask kind of, uh, kind of like a splitter, so that could be effective. But again, another example of if you have an arm injury, it can really affect your effectiveness. Rally caps are on. Here's the 1 1 delivery by Wirtz, and that's just misses. There's the base hit, number one in his major league career. And there's the baseball. Kevin Millwood secured it. Here's the 2 1 delivery. Came in on him, 2 and 2. It was like Philadelphia lost again, and again they scored two runs. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh <laughs> beat them by a score of three to two. They just can't get that offense in gear. They get some key injuries right now. Swung on and missed. Two good pitches down and in. Wirtz gets the strikeout. Yeah, well, that's what he does so fast. Great movement. Last year, six and one for the A's. 74 games, 102 strikeouts, and 
just below 79 innings. And when healthy, the ball's moving all over the place. So one more out for the O's to work with here in the ninth. Moore has drawn a walk over two. A loss here, and the Orioles will finish the year against the A's at three wins and seven losses. And will not get the back to back series wins they had hoped for. Marietta will drop to two and two, and Cahill will go to eight and two, and Cahill will have nine games now without a loss. Seven wins, no losses, and two no decisions in those games. Well, I can really tell you what pitching does. Because you look at them, you figure, well, you know, they don't really out homer you. And they usually don't. And he just pitched well. The bullpen is good. And then when you have to play them at home, they're a special ball club because they just play so well. A two ball, one strike count. Moore trying to keep it alive. He's looking for his first hit in limited bats against the A's this year. Came in uh, 0 for 7. He's had an 0 for 2 tonight against Oakland pitching. And we saw Juan Samuel talking him on the bench just to try to keep him healthy. He's uh, still learning the little nuances of playing second base. 2 1 delivers up high. Works unhappy with himself on that one. And he falls behind 3 and 1. Well, for a young hitter, that really, I mean, I know it's 8 to 1, and you're still, I mean, you get another out. But the difference of not chasing that pitch is huge over the course of a career, over the course of a month, a year. Get you better pitches to hit. 3 1 delivery. In the air to left. Dave Gross. And this ball game is part of the record books. And the A's will take the series as they come away with an 8 1 win in the rubber match of this set on a 15 hit attack. Join us again tomorrow. Morrow's action coming your way. Start of a three game set at Fenway. Brad Bergeson will take the mound against the knuckleballer Tim Wakefield. O's Extra, presented by your local Ford dealer, will be on Masson HD 630, followed by the game coverage on Masson HD at 7. For Jim Palmer and Amber Theo Harris and all of our great crew here, we bid you adieu from Camden Yards. The final, the A's won it by a score of 8 1. This has been a Masson presentation. We'll see you in Boston tomorrow night. O's Extra, Jim and Rick, right now.